Welcome to the Sports Inshore Premiership. We kicked off our coverage last week with a thrilling encounter between Leicester Lions and Sheffield Tigers. Tonight, we've headed back across the Midlands to Wolverhampton, home of the Mighty Wolves. It's a beautiful evening here in Mama Green for tonight's clash between Wolverhampton Wolves and last year's champions, the Bellevue Aces. And throughout the season, we will be in fine company with our two resident experts, Calvin Tayton and Scott Nichols. Gentlemen, good evening. Calv, we got underway in Leicester last week. It wasn't Sheffield Tigers night. Possibly best summarised by Heat 10 and that tactical sub of Jack Holder not working out for them. Exactly, yeah. It sort of summed up their evening, didn't it? Yeah, they just didn't get going and uh, it was a surprise to us all because we were expecting a really tight contest there. Leicester, a good-looking outfit, solid, but um, Sheffield should have done better and they'll be disappointed about that. But uh, nonetheless, I expect better from Sheffield as the season goes on, but uh, a handy win for the home team. Yeah. Scotty, it was an incident-free evening until the very last heat and a massive collision. Any update, particularly on Richard Lawson, because he looked pretty beaten up? Yeah, that was a huge crash. Richard went down very hard. It was uh, one of those horrible situations where his handlebars just snagged on Michelle X Kevlar's, and it's one of those situations where you know you're going down, but you can't do anything about it. He went down very hard. Fortunately, he's okay. I believe he's riding tonight, and uh, so tough cookie if he is. So he only missed one meeting. Crazy, huh? Crazy, crazy stuff, you Speedway riders. And, Cal, this time last week, we also had Wolves versus Ipswich, a massive Heat 13, and it was Masters and Schlein that got the better of Doyle and Saif Futanov, possibly showing how strong this team are at home. Yeah, they've really hit the ground running this year, and uh, they know this place inside out, and there's no doubt that uh, Doyle and Saif Futanov won't be turned over too many times in Heat 13 or 15. So uh, a real feather in the cap of the Wolverhampton team, and uh, they needed it because they were under a lot of pressure but uh, responded brilliantly and uh, came away with the win. So uh, I think it's indicative of the sort of form that this team's in. Yeah, absolutely. Well, tonight is the second leg. We've had the first leg earlier today. What is this traditional bank holiday double header between these two sides? Let's join Dave Rowe and get up to speed. Hot conditions and a big crowd in Manchester as Bellevue met Wolverhampton for the first of two Bank Holiday Monday clashes and it turned out to be an action-packed encounter. The away side got off to a flying start, former Aces rider Steve Worrell in yellow making a fast skate from the inside in Heat 1, whilst Wolves captain Sam Masters battled hard with Dan Bewley and Tom Brennan. He came through at the end of lap 1, going inside Brennan, his side opened the meeting with a big 5-1. There was drama in Heat 6, the rider in white, Rory Schlein on the inside was disqualified for movement at the start, and after the red lights came on, Bewley came to grief on Turn 2. Well, Schlein was disqualified, Bewley was back in the rerun, and Bellevue looked set to make big ground with a 5-1. Bewley well out in front, only to suffer mechanical failure going into lap 2, and that kept Walls with a 4-point advantage. And they kept on at making fast starts to double the advantage. Schlein and White with a strong ride to get the better of Charles Wright in Heat 9. Great move here around the outside, going round the Bellevue Mound, while Zach Cook in yellow held off Jamin Lindsay for third place. With five heats to go, Wolverhampton led 34-26. Bellevue finally made some progress in Heat 13. Bewley and Brady Kurtz pulling off a tremendous first two turns to squeeze out Masters for a 5-1. And they went on to add a 4-2 in Heat 14 to cut the gap to two points. A win there for Charles Wright and a vital third place for Jake Mulford teeing up a big last heat decider. So Wolves in front, 43-41, and a spectacular Heat 15. Bewley in red with control of the race from the start, but a huge battle between Kurtz and the Wolves duo. Ryan Douglas in white, Sam Masters in yellow. Kurtz moving through into third place at the expense of Masters, but Douglas held firm for second in a massive battle, and that meant the final regular score was 45 apiece, one league point each, and the extra league point to be decided in a superheat. 
and if Heat 15 was good, the Super Heat topped everything with Douglas and Luke Becker taking the lead for Wolves. A way win at this stage looked very likely indeed. Reminder of the Super Heat scoring is 4 3 2 0. So second and third better than first and fourth. And the Bellevue boys putting in a massive challenge. Beauty in blue going round the outside of Becker. But at this point in the race, still very much in Wolverhampton's favour with Douglas out in front and Luke Becker his first meeting back for Wolverhampton after the broken leg he suffered at the start of the season. Still holding that third place from Brady Kurtz with just over a lap to go. But a key moment here. It goes wide off the fourth bend. It brings Kurtz back into the equation and Kurtz then building up speed on the last lap of the super heat, desperately requiring third place to win it for Bellevue makes his move round the outside on turn three and four, it goes right down to the wire and the Bellevue captain Brady Kurtz in red getting round the outside of Luke Becker to win the super heat and win the meeting for Bellevue two points for the aces, one to the Wolves a fantastic meeting and three more points available tonight, Bellevue 45 Wolves 45 and Bellevue win the super heat such exciting stuff. Early season table then looks like this, and it's why tonight's prospect is so mouth-watering. Bellevue top the table, Wolverhampton Wolves in second. Only two points separating Wolves in second and Sheffield in fifth. Trailing at the moment, Kings Lynn and Peterborough Panthers. So, Calvin, it was an amazingly tight finish going down to the very last bend. Yeah, an incredible afternoon of Speedway. I think that's what it's all about. And Bellevue often just delivers when it comes to entertainment. And uh, this afternoon was no different. Uh, yeah, Wolverhampton made the home team work overtime, didn't they? And the Super Heat just delivered in grand style. And I, th I think that, of course, Bellevue will be relieved to have picked up that extra point, two points on the afternoon, more points here. But Wolverhampton looking very useful. Yeah. Yeah, and when we talked about how dominant they are here, it's like they're fortress. They've got to be feeling confident about getting the aggregate point. Oh, absolutely. They're in the driving seat there, and Pete Adams will be. He won't let them be you know, complacent here this evening, of course, because uh, fatigue, mental fatigue, may play a part tonight with two meetings on the same day and guys dashing around Europe all at the same time. But nonetheless, it sets up really well, and I'm sure Mark Lemon will have his men fired up for tonight. How did you used to manage it, Kelv? It is a, you need to wind down, but then you can go a bit flat and yeah. then you need to actually then experience tells you you've got to switch back on again. So it is a challenge mentally, not physically, but mentally today. OK, well, let's hear um, from Scott now, who's with the captains. Yeah, thanks, Abby. The two captains join me now. So Master Wolf, Hampton Wolves and Brady Kurtz and Bellevue Aces. First off, we're going to do the all-important coin toss. Heads. Tails it is. Sam, it's your choice, mate. Yeah, we'll go Heat 15. Eddie, what's your theory behind going Heat 15? We don't really care what gate we go off, to be honest, and uh, I suppose if this team pushes to the end like it was this morning, then we might be able to have a better choice of gate. So, uh, uh, yeah, no, no real big reason, but, yeah, we're happy to go from whatever gate. Talking this afternoon at Bellevue, a fantastic performance by the Wolves. Did you expect to go there and push them that hard? Not after our performance there last time. We got a bit of a spanking and, uh, you know, the, all the boys dug deep. Everyone did their job and, uh, yeah, it would have been an awesome meeting to watch on, on a bank holiday. I know. Thanks, Sam. Come to you, Brady. Brady, this afternoon, the Wolves pushed you very, very hard. Had to go down to that uh, super heat in the end. Not the result you were looking for. No, nah, it's not ideal that we had to go to the super heat, but obviously it's good that we did end up getting the win. That's the, that's the important thing. And, uh, yeah, now we've got to put that behind us, focus on tonight. And uh, we were pretty poor here at the start of the year. So uh, hopefully we've learned a little bit from that and we can make some changes and adjust and, uh, yeah, have a better performance tonight. Day meetings are always hard. Did track conditions catch you out today? Yeah, it's always difficult when you race at 12, especially when it's such a nice day like it is. It's hard to keep the water in. And I wouldn't say the conditions were bad. They were just different to, to usual, which probably cost us a little bit. But uh, it, it is what it is. And we, we've had day meetings before and we, we should have learned. Well, the motivations there go well tonight. Good luck, boys. We're in for a good night's racing. Scott, thank you. Let's head trackside for the first time this evening, see what the conditions are like with Calvin. It's Monmore Green and it's the second leg of a double header today and I've got to say we've got beautiful weather once again which is a delight and as a consequence they've had to put an awful lot of water on the track. I'm actually in the middle of the first corner. I generally come to this place because you can see as I just pan backwards here a little bit, got the dirtometer out, they do work this inside quite extensively. It's a tradition here, it used to be called the, the Carlson Corridor and it's always something that they work on and you can actually 
see they're right down on the inside. It really is very grippy indeed. So you will see early on riders actually uh, targeting that to try and get that grip coming off the corners, something that um, uh, can pay big dividends. As we make our way into the middle of the track, very different here. Dirtometer hardly penetrates the surface, so this kind of is no man's land, and particularly earlier on in the meeting, you just don't want to find yourself here because people are going to go certainly on the inside of you, and quite possibly, as we make our way out to the top of the banking, here wide on turn two, once again you can see the dirtometer going a, a decent amount, plenty of water here, and as the evening goes on, this uh, outside line will become more and more handy for the riders because they're going to be able to generate lots of speed by roaring around the outside. Starts have been ripped up as well, very similar to what you've just seen there on the outside, so should be pretty fair away from the tapes. They're all square after the afternoon's meetings, these two, the Aces and the Wolves. It really is going to be a tight struggle. As I say, it's going to be... Uh, more of a test technically here this evening because this is a tight one, whereas Bellevue's a big, fast, flat-out blind. But uh, once again, we're going to be in for some super action and Premiership Speedway is back on Monday night. It absolutely is, and we want to hear from you. We want you to be part of the conversation. Use the hashtag Wallbell across all of our social media platforms, especially if you've got any questions for the boys. OK, we're going to head for a quick break. When we come back, we'll meet tonight's teams, and we have an exclusive announcement for you. I promise you, it's a biggie. We are joined by Wall's man, Roy Schlein. Roy, you can't keep away. No, <laughs> back no. out of retirement, why? Yeah, uh, back and, and, and loving it, really. So uh, today was a good result for the boys. You know, it's always tough going to Bellevue, but, um, you know, we, we fought hard and, and we come away with a point. And how are you feeling when you have a, a year out? I know we are a few matches in, but everyone's talking about, you know, Schlein is back and he's back at his best. I wouldn't say best, but yeah, we're getting there. Um, gating's been a bit up and down, but uh, just enjoying it. You know, I didn't come back for, you know, financial or anything like that. I've come back to, to, to enjoy, you know, the racing. And, uh, you know, we're doing that at the minute. You know, a good result tonight. That put us top of the table. And there's always a good spirit amongst the camp. And, and Pete Adams, he's brilliant at keeping loyalty and having a lot of the same riders. How much of that enjoyment is part of the guys around you? It's one of the reasons why I wanted to come back here. Um, I feel part of the furniture and, you know, to be fair, you know, I didn't want to really go anywhere else. Like, Chris was one of the first people I spoke to about when I decided I wanted to ride. And, and that, like you said, loyalty here is probably by far one of the best clubs for that uh, in the country. So, um, you know, and it speaks volumes. You only have to look at the sides. You know, they pretty much stay the same year after year. And, you know, we do get results, but uh, we're just looking for a bit more silverware. Yeah, and you mentioned how tight it was earlier you guys I think it was eight points at front at some point they pushed you hard but considering that it was quite a beating there early in the year um you've got to be coming to this leg really confident well yeah look we, obviously with the cup they they really um sort of did what we did to them when they came here so uh but we 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 made some changes and the lads all, all chipped in you know with, with valuable points and but towards the end there um you know with Dan and, and Brady they, they, they're pretty special around there so to come away with a point is still still uh, positive for us and uh, you know but we know what we can do here tonight as well so um, we'll be trying to repeat what we did to him earlier. Roy thank you so much go well tonight and great thank to see you back. Thank you.
plenty of two-wheel action coming up over the next couple of weeks right across the Discovery Network includes the World Superbikes Round 5 in Mazzano. That's Saturday, 8.40, Discovery Plus Live. We've got the Motocross World Championship from Latvia also on Discovery Plus Live, also Saturday at 11 o'clock. We will be in par for the next round of the Speedway Grand Prix and that's Saturday, 5.30, your Sport 2 Live. And also, MotoGP Grand Prix of Italy from Magella. If you like your bikes, definitely be on Eurosport and Discovery Plus over the next couple of weeks. That's BT Sport 2 Live, 9th to the 11th of June. But here at Mama Green and British Speedway, it's Wolverhampton Wolves against last year's champions, Bellevue Aces. Time to meet tonight's teams. Here's Calf. Thanks very much, Abby. Uh, very much looking forward to the evening's action. It's been a fabulous day of Speedway already with a really tight tussle up at Bellevue earlier on. The first one we're going to watch, uh, have a look at now is Jake Mulford from Bellevue, the rising star there. Did a fine job in Heat 14 this afternoon, so um, uh, coming good when his team really needed it. So young Jake making his way in the uh, top echelon of British Speedway. Good to see him. We have, um, uh, as he appears on track now, and uh, his first taste of the action. We have a guest now, Paco Castagna, quite a character, Paco. He'll be giving it his all. He's an Italian rider and he rides in the championship generally, but um, he's been around a while, but uh, nonetheless, he's a hard charger and we'll be giving 100% out there for the Bellevue Aces this evening, that's for sure. Good to see Paco here. Brady Kurtz, who was quite a hero in actual fact in heat, in the super heat this afternoon, where he got the better of Luke Becker to actually uh, win the super heat and win the match for the Bellevue Aces. It was such a tight tussle. The super heat going down to the very last corner and Brady Kurtz doing the business there. And good to see the captain here riding as uh, well as ever. Charles Wright up next, former British champion, of course, in that engine room of the Aces, always doing great, uh, great work. And uh, Charles is an integral part of this side now. He's been with the Aces for several seasons. And you've got to believe that um, uh, he will be going good. And he goes good here as well. He is an eye-catching rider. Uh, a signing in the winter, of course, for German Lidzi into there. He rides well in Poland, beginning to find his feet once again in British Speedway. And a lot of it is expected of this young Australian rider. And uh, very professionally turned out. And I uh, know that he's looking forward to tonight's event, that's for sure. So Lidzi riding at three. Tom Brennan, upcoming British rider. Again, another rider with lots of potential, similar to Lidzi. And uh, as I say, Tom really beginning to make his mark and gaining an experience all the time. So um, uh, again, they are looking to those two youngsters to really come good this year. And of course, the man to watch tonight, my man to watch, and I think most people's man to watch is Dan Bewley, back in British Speedway. And uh, he really is uh, quite an eye-catching rider. He's a superstar of the sport these days, a fully-fledged Grand Prix rider, of course, the British champion, reigning British champion. He won last year in fine style at his home track. So great to see Dan back in British Speedway. And as I say, he's my man to watch. I think he will set the tone for the aces. And they'll need to do better than they did earlier in the season here. They had a poor performance uh, that night. So uh, looking to improve this time around, and I'm sure they will. So Dan Bewley with a number one on his back. That's the Bellevue Aces for you this evening. Mark Lemon is their team manager. So now we can take a look at the home team, Leon Flynn. Once again, another young British rider. Started the season slowly, but of late has really begun to pick up his form and the points are coming in a plenty now. And a very handy rider down at Reserve Road well earlier today. And uh, Leon coming from the Berwick area and certainly is a rider to keep your eye on. Zach Cook, a new rider to the outfit, the young Australian, once again has had plenty of experience riding for the Pool Pirates and once again is really beginning to uh, find his feet for the Wolves. Wolves are a really good outfit right now, and you've got to believe that he's playing his part. Great to see Rory Schlein back. Just had the year sabbatical, but um, is back and is riding pretty near his best once again, and uh, doesn't seem to have been affected at all by the year away, so good to see Rory back. Ryan Douglas was a star earlier today at Bellevue. Uh, another Australian, plenty of them here this evening, the Australians, out in force. And Ryan Douglas, certainly part and parcel of the Wolverhampton team. And this is my man to watch, Luke Becker, who missed the start of the season with a broken leg, still limping, actually, but uh, great to see him back on the bike and had his um, World Championship qualifier 
earlier this weekend with Greg Hancock in a, um, uh, attendance with him and he rode this afternoon and it's his first home meeting of the season and a fan favourite and a great reception to see Luke Becker back here at Monmore Green. Super stuff. And we've got Stevie Worrell, of course, a former Bellevue Aces himself. This is his second season here, really beginning to settle in and feel part of the furniture. And Steve Worrell is a handy performer, fully fit these, these days and uh, more than capable of popping out and winning races. So Stevie Worrell looking for a big night. This this Wolverhampton team, I must say, these very solid indeed. And their leader, of course, is Sam Masters. Sam, once again, has been here for some considerable time now, has had a testimonial here. And uh, the ever laid back Sam, but uh, when he pulls that helmet on, he really does mean business. So they're the two teams for you. Two good looking teams, the top two in the league, going head to head here this evening at Monmore Green. And not too much longer before we get on with the action. So there are the two teams. Let's get on with the action and uh, we get down to Abbey. A quick reminder then of the new scoring system this year, particularly tonight because there is a bonus point on offer. It's two points for a win and zero for a loss, but a super heat will decide the winner of an individual match like we had earlier today at the National Speedway Stadium in Bellevue, Manchester, but it will also decide the aggregate winner if the two teams are drawn after the two legs. Now, before the break, we mentioned that we had some new and exclusive, exciting news to make to you all Speedway fans out there. Well, let us whet your appetite a little bit further. Semi-final number one then. This is crunch time for that man coming out of gate number three. What a campaign he's had, he's away. Fabulous start from Laguta. Smarsik there, tucking into second place. This is what it's all about now. He's got to hang on out in front. The pressure's going to come from behind, that's for sure. Laguta's been superb here. Now, into the last corner. What an effort from Artem Laguta. Out of the last turn, he's going to be the 2021 World Speedway Champion. What an effort from Artem Laguta. He's been superb throughout the campaign. The celebrations can begin now. Congratulations from everybody concerned. A terrific effort from Artem Laguta. Oh, I don't know, I don't know. It's very, very happy. Yeah, thank you, my Johnny, life, Avelina, Adam, Agnes. Thank you, my dad, my mom. I'm very happy today. Incredible scenes back in 2021. Happy today. Alex Brady joins us now. He's hotfooted across from East Anglia. Team manager, obviously, at Kingsland. Huge news. I'm going to just let you tell us all. Yeah, delighted to, uh, to get it over the line. Um, came together a, sort of a couple of weeks ago. Uh, finally got the green light subject to international clearance this afternoon to, to move forwards. And uh, yeah, uh, fantastic to bring him in on Thursday night. Artem Laguta, a world champion joining Kings Lynn. It is huge. I told you it was huge. Um, what impact is he going to have? We know what he can do, obviously, on the track, but it's been a tough start for your side. What's he going to do off the shell as well? Yeah, he's going to be fantastic on the track, but off track he's going to bring a lot. Um, you know, leadership skills and just that oomph that we need in Heat 1. We haven't had a heat advantage yet in Heat 1 this season, so we've been chasing meetings from, from the start. Uh, I think we've Artem in there, and uh, that's going to make a big difference for us, and hopefully we can uh, kick on from here. How long have you been working on the deal, Alex? It's been around two weeks, to be fair. I, mean, I spoke to his manager six weeks ago and around four weeks ago, but it all came together after the Warsaw Grand Prix. Um, we got an introduction from, from Ty Wolfenden, uh, who managed to help me get it over the line slightly, so a uh, big thank you to him. Um, but, yeah, two weeks in the making, and hopefully Thursday night it's all, it's all green light and good to go. I wondered why we were seeing you at the Grand Prix. <laughs> yeah, I like, I like going to them anyway, but um, I made a late decision to go to that one, and I'm thankful that I did, and that flight home, I, I won't forget it for a long time. So, uh, yeah, great, great news and delighted to get it over the line. When will we see Laguta first in action then? Thursday evening at home to Sheffield. So uh, every Kings Lynn fan, I employ you to come along and, uh, and make the journey over. And, you know, we've been crying out for a number one for a long time and I think we've got one. Yeah, and then in for the Eurosport cameras, I think it's uh, middle of June that we'll be at Kings Lynn. Yeah, Leicester at home, um, I believe, uh, around three weeks' time, I think it is. So uh, looking forward to that one as well. And I'm sure there'll be a big, a big audience for that.
Alex, it's, it's brilliant news. It's so exciting with Emil Saifutinov and Artem Laguta and British Speedway certainly looks a very handsome place at the moment. Alex, thank you so much. We look forward to seeing Laguta in action, but we've got another meeting going on this evening. It's at the East of England Arena as Peterborough Panthers host Leicester Lions. Here's Dave Rowe. Yes, and the aggregate point at stake here as well because Leicester won 47-42 in the East Midlands very early in the season and Peterborough, of course, finally got off the mark last week against uh, Kings Lynn. But Leicester have made a flying start to this meeting. They were good at Ipswich last uh, Thursday night, making some fast starts in Heat 1. Max Frick and Justin Sedman racing away from uh, Ben Cook and the guest Michael Palm Toft. And then after a shared Heat 2, Heat 3 also going very much the way of the Leicester Lions. Richard Lawson back in action after that horrific crash last week but no ill effects with that fast start. And the rider in yellow is Kyle Howarth, guesting for Chris Harris away on GP qualifier duty. Howarth, a former Leicester rider in the championship, battling away with Benjamin Basso and coming hard down the inside on lap two for a second Leicester 5-1. A flying start for the Lions, three hits gone. It's Peterborough 5, Leicester 13. So remember to join the conversation. What did you think of the Laguta news? Use the hashtag wall bell and um we'll pose all the questions to the guys as well later on in the show okay time for a quick break when we come back it'll be straight on with the action We are joined by Chris Van Stratton, the promoter here of Wolverhampton Wolves. Obviously, a few weeks ago, it was a, a shocking announcement about the lease not being re-signed here for Speedway. Where are we at? Because obviously, we're looking at social media and trying to get updates. But from, from your perspective... The local authority, and include the local MP, have been very, very helpful. So we're, we're optimistic, um, and I'm hoping that if we can find another site within the next two months which we can develop from scratch which i think there's no long-term future here then maybe i have the opportunity to go back to labbrooks and say can we do one more year which is what i would like to do but until i've got that site then i can't i mean it was such a shock when the announcement came up we've been here 30 years and we never saw it coming and it was delivered to us like days before the press day so it, it took a lot to recover from that but I've got my enthusiasm and my energy back by trying to find a new site now and I'm working hard on that so uh, hopefully in the next two months something will develop. And how did you keep the spirit up within the camp as well and with the riders because that would have also been shocking news for them. Well, yes, I mean, I, I kept that information because we were so close to Sam uh, Masters' testimonial. I kept it to myself for about 11 days, which was dreadful. Uh, dreadful. I was an animal to be around, you know. But then, then we, we made the announcement, and um, obviously they're just as shocked as I was, you know. It, it's, it's, nobody saw it coming, nobody. The staff here and the local staff have been marvellous, you know, and the, the relationship continues and they're very helpful locally. It's Entain as a group that have made that decision, who were a massive gambling uh, company, and they've made that decision. And, and you know, I, I can't argue with that. I'm a leaseholder, but I did honestly expect it to be renewed. Yeah, and I'm sure emotional, and we can hear it still in your voice, but now the fact that there is a new site, hopefully in the next month or two, and that will give you possibly another year extension here to get everything sorted. Hopefully, that's, that's what we're aiming for, and, and um, let's keep positive. Okay, Chris, thank you so much for talking to us in such a candid way as well. We'll keep posted on all the news as that develops. We've got an exciting match coming up here, though, first in Mama Green. Chris, thank you so much. Welcome back to Mama Green then for Wolverhampton Wolves versus Bellevue. 
We had the first leg of this meeting earlier today and it finished in a super heat 45 all. Heat one is moments away, but first here's Dave Rowe for a quick update. Peterborough versus Leicester. Yes, Leicester racing into an eight point lead after the first three heats with two five ones. Peterborough desperately had to get themselves on the board. And in heat four, the Leicester rising star Dan Thompson in yellow making a really fast start and forcing Neil Trish Neverson into a move around the outside on the third and fourth turns with Jordan Jenkins in blue battling with Nick Morris. Everson going round to take the advantage, which would uh, cut the gap as far as the Panthers are concerned. But there is an injury concern over Benjamin Basso, which could be a major issue later in the meeting. Basso conceding a five one in his first ride. And definitely got problems but they're getting back into the meeting or trying to in this particular race with uh, Niels Krishni was against Dan Thompson holding a, a decent second place and meanwhile uh, Jordan Jenkins keeping at bay Nick Morris the Leicester standing captain for third place so Peterborough get a 4-2 out of heat four and it's Peterborough nine Leicester 15. OK, the riders are ready for Heat 1 here in Wolverhampton. Your commentator this evening, Calvin Tatum. Thanks very much, Abby. And uh, we are now just uh, getting on with uh, the opening race of the night. Uh, the coin toss was won by the home team and they've elected to have gate choice in Heat 15 and that has allowed the Bellevue Aces to go with gates one and three in the opening race so it'll um, be interesting to see how that works out for them the Bellevue Aces I would suggest need to get off to a really good start here um, there's no doubt that um, uh, they had a tough time this afternoon with the uh, Wolverhampton boys really pushing them all the way um, uh, with that super heat really going down to the crunch and the Aces just about coming out on top with a third and fourth um, which allowed them just to steal that extra point for winning in the superheat. But it all starts again square here now. Aggregate point, of course, whoever wins here will pick up the uh, extra point as well. And uh, that will be uh, handy, particularly as we come uh, closer to the playoffs later in the season. So, heat number one, Sam Masters. Um, uh, no doubt is uh, keen to get on with it, but Dan Bewley back in the sport in this country is great to see. And um, I'm looking forward to seeing him this evening, no doubt about that. As I say, he will come uh, out of one of the outside gates here. So here we go then, the opening race of the night. On the inside in yellow is Tom Brennan, on gate number two in blue is Steve Worrell. Gate number three in white is Dan Bewley, and on the outside is uh, Sam Masters in red and uh, I've got to say that Bellevue need to get off to a flying start here because the Wolverhampton boys really are going great guns around their home patch this season so far. Brilliant win against Ipswich recently when they got the better of um, of uh, Ipswich Witches and when you consider they've got Jason Doyle and Emil Sarfutin off in their side that was a great effort indeed. So a healthy crowd in on a bank holiday Monday, beautiful weather, perfect racing conditions really shouldn't be too many excuses out there this evening so here we go then start Marshall just trying to get the riders up in line looking like he is happy now Willie Dishington's our referee this season the free line is on and we're underway they come roaring towards the first corner and look at the Wolverhampton pair fabulous stuff from them Steve Worrell on the inside Sam Masters on the outside absolutely flew away from gates two and four and they are dominating heat number one. What a, what a start for them. And there's no question that they are really flying high and a great opening race here for the home team. Dan Bewley working overtime back in third place. And you've got to believe that they're going to have to produce a minor miracle here. Tom Brennan now coming through into third place, but the Wolverhampton pair absolutely dominant out in front. Will perfect, sharp away from the tape into the last lap and uh, they have got it all under control and the Wolverhampton pairing are going to get the big result here fabulous 5-1 for the home team Steve Worrell absolutely superb out in front but um, uh, the ideal start disappointment for the Aces when they considered out gates 1 and 3 just didn't get away to the start they were looking for but uh, a fabulous start for the uh, Wolverhampton team 
they will be chuffed to bits with that. And, uh, home crowd clearly absolutely delighted with that. We'll, we'll see the result now of the opening race of the evening. Out in front then, Steve Worrell, going great guns, three points for him. Sam Masters back in second place, two points for him. And Tom Brennan back in third and Dan Bewley missing out in the opening race. OK, then, let's get some reaction straight away with Scotty Nichols. Yeah, thanks, Kel. Fantastic start for the Wolves. I mean, they can't go to a better start than that. They lost the gate choice. But you see here, Dan Bewley in the white there just lifts that little bit too much, allows Sam Masters in the red to get around the outside. Stevie Worrell has a good look for his teammate coming out the first turn here. Fantastic home track knowledge again. Look at that. Stevie Worrell just clamps the door shut on Tom Brennan, allows Sam Masters just a little run to get down the outside. There's not quite enough grip there but he closes it down, he holds it nice and tight here. Tries to let Sam run outside, look, has a look there, Sam, smart move here, knows that the outside's not working. You can see uh, uh, Dan Bewley there on the outside trying, but frustrating. Nothing for Dan Bewley out there, and 5-1 uh, to the boys, and back to you, Kelf. And uh, the home team will be chuffed to bits with that. This team certainly are going about their business in a fine fashion this year. They really are. And uh, you can see it that uh, it's going to be some uh, performance if they're going to get the better of the home team. Heat number two for you. Now the reserves coming out. We've got a guest here as well with Paco Castagna coming out for the Bellevue side. And um, it will be uh, interesting to see how he goes, of course. The reserves can have uh, up to seven rides in the evening, so they can play a pivotal role in the outcome of uh, the evening, particularly if one catches fire. The team manager has the uh, ability to chop and change throughout the evening, so um, uh, these boys will be keen to get off to a good start. Tough having two meetings in the same day, mentally more than physically. You've got to remember, um, obviously, you're fired up for the afternoon meeting, and then you have the lull in the afternoon and into the early evening, and you've got to be able to get yourself going once again. So, uh, Mark Lemon there, oh, the champions, of course, and they did it in fine style last year. Certainly, there's no doubt uh, he'll be trying to repeat that in 2023. So heat number two. Heat two then on the inside in the red helmet colour is Zach Cook from Australia. Paco Castagna comes out of gate number two in white. Gate number three in blue is Leon Flint. And Jake Mulford, who was a bit of a star man this afternoon, goes off the outside in yellow. And um, uh, we saw the uh, opening race where gates two and four, uh, four worked a treat for the home team, so the Aces will be hoping that they can produce something similar here, but uh, you just sense that um, uh, there's no doubt that the home team will be keen to try and build on that superb start, and uh, there's no doubt about that. Here we go then, heat number two, a charge into the first turn, and uh, Zach Cook's made a smashing start on the inside, they're hugging that inside, gets that extra bit of grip. He's joined there on the outside, by Leon Flynn, and once again, oh my goodness, out of control there. Paco Castagna lifting violently across in front of Leon Flynn, and that kills his momentum and allows Jake Mulford just momentarily into third place. Place Leon Flynn has come back into third now. Out in front, though, is Zach Cook. Terrific start from the inside. Oh, the all-action Italian there, Paco Castagna, hanging on to second place, riding strongly. Leon Flint recovered superbly well there. Could have been quite a nasty incident, that. But Flint is in third place, so another heat advantage on the cards here. Cook out in front, comfortable, looking really good. Castagna settles in second place, but really dominant ride here from young Zach Cook. Superb stuff from him, three points. Easy win in heat number two, 4-2 to the home team. Castagna hanging on for second place. But the home team once again really are looking fired up here. Nine points to three after two outings. And uh, Zach Cook made that inside gate work a treat. He hugged the inside, he knew the grip was there. We pointed that out in the track report. It's always there here. And he didn't miss a trick. And he looked really good. So the uh, result of heat two is Zach Cook out in front, three points for him. Castagna, the all action Castagna, two points. Leon Flint recovered brilliantly for that third place. And Jake Mulford 
just missing out in heat number two. I'm sure Scotty will be uh, having a, a look at that incident on the opening lap, Scott, because that was all action stuff. <laughs> it certainly was, Kelv. I mean, man, uh, Paco did very well to hold on to that. But again, the Wolves boys dominant from the start. It was Gates one and three this time. Zach Cook, smart first turn, holds it nice and low, has a good look for his team out. I have to emphasize such good team riding here. But right now, keep your eye on the guy in white. Paco Castagna just catches the grip. His foot is off the footrest. Leon Flint does very, very well to miss him. Exceptional. The man here in the white is one you want to focus on a little bit later on. Paco Castagna with a red top, number six on his back. Comes down the straight. He rides a tight track at Edinburgh, so he knows how to turn the bike. But just comes to the turn here, sitting nice and tight. And all of a sudden, the bike aggressively lifts there. His right foot is off the footrest. Does well to miss the fence, but poor old Leon Flint. I'm not sure if he knew realized what was happening there. Pretty scary moment, that Kelv. It was indeed, Scotty. And I think he was very fortunate there not to collect Leon Flint. And Leon Flint, just out of his peripheral vision, just saw him coming in the nick of time. And then, just to add uh, to that as well, Paco Castagna does well to actually avoid the safe defence. So it really was a uh, really action-packed... Uh, but we can get some reaction now from that man in the thick of the action with Abby now. Kelvin, thank you. Paco, you just went... <laughs> I don't know what happened, to be honest. I don't know how I saved it. I don't know what I've done. It's the first lap here, and I'm like going into the corner thinking I'm, I'm holding on to it, and then one next minute I'm just up in the air. And now nah, I'm just happy I didn't collect anybody with me, but it was good. Um, just need to make a better start now and do some more points. It was very dramatic. And just off camera as well, you went over and uh, gave yeah, Liam just, Flint. I, I just apologize <laughs> because I know how it is when a rider just come, comes across here. So. No, it was okay. You done well not to not to be there, and uh, no, I just made it easier for myself later. So it was it was okay. A couple of points, and need to make better starts now. Paco, thank you. You made for an entertaining start. <laughs> Let's uh, rejoin Calvin. Thanks, Abby. And that is a moustache. I tell you what, you can be proud of something like that. That's for sure. Paco Castagna certainly making his mark in his opening ride. Uh, heat number three, and we're on board with Luke Becker. Uh, he'll be keen to have a good uh, meeting here. Ryan Douglas is out here as well, who rode really well this afternoon at Bellevue and um, really was in top form, as was the team. Um, not an easy place to go to, Bellevue. Such a big, fast track. And uh, the Wolverhampton team did supremely well to uh, get a draw. Just missing out in the super heat. There we are on board with Luke Becker, who goes from the outside gate in heat number three. Limping quite uh, heavily, though, still Luke Becker, so clearly still on the mend, as it were, but uh, fit enough to ride. So heat number three. Line up for you, then. On the inside is Jimon Lidsey in the white helmet colour. Ryan Douglas comes out of gate number two in blue. Charles Wright out of gate number three in yellow. And Luke Becker off the outside in red. Uh, this pairing from the Bellevue Aces here certainly have got to try and combine. Charles Wright has got loads of experience of the British Speedway. Jamin Litsey, uh, not quite as much, but that inside gate often is a favourite here, early on particularly, and he'll be keen to try and take full advantage of it now. Nine points to three, so already at this very early stage, after a couple of races, the aces have slipped behind, so they'll be keen to try and get away sharpish now. It is about making good starts, particularly on the smaller tracks, and Wolverhampton is certainly one of those. So here we go then, heat number three. Green lights on, tapes are up, and we go roaring away once again. They hit that first turn, Lindsay gets there in front, the Wolverhampton pair packing in behind him. Douglas down the back straight, here comes Becker around the outside, first race of the season here at Monmore. Douglas has gone awfully wide there and has left the door open, but he comes back into third place now. Look at that from Becker. Oh, Douglas nearly running in the back of Lindsay. All sorts of shenanigans going on there with Charles Wright now coming through into third. This is an action-packed race, easily the best race of the night. What a return from Becker. Becker now, the American out in front. Here comes Charles Wright. Charles Wright has done his teammate no favours at all there. With Ryan Douglas now coming up the inside, back into third place. Lindsay goes wide. Can he be, repay the compliment? Not quite. Becker's out in front, into the last lap. Charles Wright charging hard in second place. Not quite going to get there. Becker's done a great job there. What a return to the side. Brilliant opening ride from him. Super speedway race. Racing going on in the front and the back. Couldn't take your eyes off that one. What a great return for Becker. He'll be absolutely delighted with that.
but he would have been nervous before that first race. As I say, he's not fully fit. You can see the way he's moving around, but nonetheless delights the crowd. And uh, the fan favourite here, the young American, back in style. Three points for Becker out in front then. Back in second place is Charles Wright, two points. Ryan Douglas coming through in third place. And Jaiman Litzy, who initially led the race, actually failed to score. Just shows you how action-packed heat number three was. And, Scotty, it really was uh, an action-packed race. And I'm not sure you're going to have enough time to actually <laughs> analyse everything that went on. <laughs> May I've got to be honest, I don't know what was more impressive, that or Paco's moustache, but either way, it was a certainly entertaining. I don't know who to keep my eye on here because it was all action everywhere. Jamie Lindsay makes a great start of gate one. Go This third and fourth turn looks a little bit trickier, but Luke Becker goes in nice and wide, but just look at Charles Wright and Yellow there, comes swooping across. I'm not sure if there's a little bit of a rut appearing down there, but Luke Becker, fantastic, knows this track, showed his home track knowledge, to fire up the inside there. You can see in the background, Ryan Douglas in the blue there, just wants to turn back but the bike's getting too much drive almost runs into the back of Jamin Lidsey and at that point he's dead and buried but the man out front we're on board with him right now Luke Becker does a decent start here just allows the bike to run in that dirt comes down this back straight now you can see where Jamin Lidsey is on the inside here he lets the bike run into the outside the sun's in your eyes there that can be tricky here but he turns his bike back here Jamin Lidsey's well aware that he's up the inside and from there on in there's no hope and uh, a great victory. First race back for Luke Becker and a good way to do it, Kelf. Yep, was a terrific race indeed. And uh, we do have a change here early on. We've got uh, Paco Castagna coming in to replace Jake Mulford here. So Mark Lemon ringing the changes right from the word go. You can do that with the reserves. And as I said, they can have up to seven outings in an evening. So clearly uh, Mark Lemon uh, Impressed with the performance from Paco Castagna. And uh, he did come through with a solid second place. So looking to build on that here and joining Brady Kurtz, the captain of the Bellevue Aces. And uh, they're up against uh, Rory Schlein and Leon Flint. Bellevue Aces under pressure right away here. Wolverhampton 13, five points to the Aces. It's uh, one way traffic with three heat advantages already. And uh, there's no doubt that they're going to have to. Uh, try and figure out how to get away from the starts. Brady Kurtz, of course, now with plenty of experience. He'll be coming out of gate number three and he'll be looking to try and hit the front. And Castagna, well, we don't quite know what to expect. He didn't even know what was going on, did he? He just was pleased that he didn't collect anybody. Fortunately, that was the case. So heat number four. And not too far away for you now. Bit of gardening going on. There is a lot of grip down there. I must say they did a good job there. They've put plenty of water in, and the start and finish straight is actually in the shade, so that helps. But Pete Adams there, team manager for the home team, will be very satisfied so far. Heat number four, then. Castagna will go on the inside of, as a reserve switch there in the yellow helmet colour. Alongside him is Leon Flint in blue in gate two. Gate number three in white is Brady Kurtz for his first ride in Rory Slime. On the outside in red, again, his first ride of the evening. And uh, Rory Schlein just taking that year out, retired, and then uh, surprised us all by uh, reversing that decision and back in the UK and back with the Wolverhampton Wolves where he wanted to be. He'd been riding for several seasons previously with the Wolverhampton Wolves, and uh, they welcomed him back with Nick Morris actually coming up with the Leicester Lions. So uh, that was effectively the change to the team. Rory Schlein has found his feet very quickly and fair play to him. Uh, it's riding very well indeed. Mark Lemon, a little bit of concern for him. Looking for an improvement here in heat number four. Start Marshall's happy. Green lights on, tapes are up and we're underway. Brilliant start from Castagna on the inside there. Brady Kurtz around the outside. Castagna really did rock it out of the inside gate and the bases are on a 5-1 here and putting the home team for the first time under a bit of pressure. Kurtz out in front. Castagna, well, could he be quite a guest tonight? Terrific stuff from him. Schlein's gone very wide. Leon Flynn is out the back, but the Aces have stolen a march here. This is more like it from the champions out in front. Brady Kurtz, who did absolutely extraordinary effort in the super heat earlier on today. And they've got this one all wrapped up nicely. Castagna hugging that inside, turning the bike really well, actually. He's a tall man, but he's looking good on the bike. Rory Schlein now a distance back in third place. And this is just what the doctor ordered for the Bellevue Aces. Into the last turn of heat number four, and Brady Kurtz in fine style wins. 
And a great effort there from Paco Castanio, who got away really sharply in heat number four. And they cruise to their first heat advantage of the evening. And all of a sudden, they cut that lead down to four points with a very useful 5-1 in heat number four. Terrific effort from the aces, much needed. Result of heat number four then is Kurtz out in front, three points. Castagna back in second place, two points for him. Rory Slyne, the one point, and Leon Flint missing out. Much more like it from the aces this time, Scotty, because uh, they needed it, 13 points to five, and now just the four points in it. Yeah, they certainly need that, Kelv, a big 5-1. Brady Kurtz rode it fantastic. Well, Paco Castagna backed him up superbly there. Great race. You can see the boys here in the... The white and yellow, Paco Castagna makes a fantastic start up the inside. Gets all that grip down the inside. He keeps it nice and low, allows Brady that room around the outside. Paco rides for Edinburgh Monarchs, a nice tight little track, so he's comfortable racing there. But look at the start from there from Paco. Fantastic. He's a bike length clear. Keeps the bike nice and low, as you pointed out earlier, Kelv, that Carlson Corridor worked to full effect for the Aces this time around. But Brady Kurtz is one for me. He won the race by a mile, but he's riding the track big if that makes sense he's making it into a big circle he's not riding necessarily the conventional line like a lot of the Wolverhampton boys will run where they keep the bike nice and tight and get that grip up the inside he's allowing the bike just to run there nice smooth style Brady Kurtz there fantastic victory three points good night over to you Abby Scotty, thank you. We are going to head to a very quick break now. Remember to get involved on social media platforms. Use the hashtag WallBell. It's been all action here at Mama Green so far. Join us for Heat 5 after the break.
this return leg between these two sides, Wolverhampton Wolves and Bellevue Aces. Super tight, just four points separating them at the moment. Coming up this week across the Discovery Network, we've got Formula E Round 10 from Jakarta. It's a double header. Your Sport 2 live Saturday, 8.30. Climbing World Cups from Prague, Discovery Plus Live, 6.45. Cycling Criterium, Doot de Fun, is Stage 1, Discovery Plus Live, Sunday, 2.15. Let's head over to Scotty Nichols now. Yeah, thanks, Abby. I've got the little telestrator. For those of you who saw the Leicester match, you'll see I did a little piece on the start line where the bits that the boys focus on. So I'm going to highlight this little bit here. So all the boys are going to be trying to look at some little piece, a little trigger point that they can see that reacts as quick as they, they can. But obviously you can see here, this is for Luke Becker on board. He's off the outside gate. You've got the fences in the way, so that can impair what you can actually look at. So the boys may end up having to kind of focus on a point around here as opposed to right down in that bit there. So if I just get rid of all that squiggle there, this is Luke Becker. Incidentally, each race has won a, uh, each gate has won a heat so far, but this is Luke Becker now. He's going down the back straight here. I'm just going to skip forward a little bit, just in this entry here. He's behind Jamin Lidsey. Now, if you just watch, the sun's in the eyes there, and just watch here. If I just go back a tiny little bit, see that, his leg popping out there tells Luke Becker that Jamin Lidsey is off balance. He knows that he's got the run up the inside. He sneaks out, has a sneaky little look. He knows his track inside out, up the inside, romps away for three points. And his first heat win back with the Wolves. Back to you, Abby. Scotty, thank you. The guys are waiting patiently here for heat, fi heat five, but let's get a update from Panthers. Well, Peter were trying to come from six points down, and they're doing so without Benjamin Basso ruled out due to a hand injury picked up by Flying Shale. They heat five, they're gated on a 5 1, only for Max Frick in white to make a superb turn back off the second bend to come through on the inside and get the better of Hans Anderson and Richie Warren. Warren in blue trying the outside run, but Max Frick taking control of the race. Eventful stuff in heat six, a very competitive first bend involving Nick Morris in white and Ben Cook in blue. Michael Palm top the guest in red coming through on the inside. Nick Kermont Morris in white battling hard to split the home combination with Ben Cook out in front, scored 16, paid 18 last week. The Peter Rider, 4 2 situation, I was thinking Stan, but on the last lap, watch out for the rider in white. Nick Morris, he gets things all wrong on turn two, and that gives Michael Palm off the chance to come through on the inside. And Peter Bra's comeback continues with a 5 1 in heat six to cut the gap down to two points. 17 19 after six races. Heat seven, a convincing win for Niels Chris Nevis, his second win of the meeting. Back in form after an in and out start to the season but Everson taking the flag in heat seven and heat eight also very eventful indeed. Ben Cook was timed out so Hans Anderson came in in red to partner with Jordan Jenkins and made the best start in blue for Peterborough. Round the outside coming at Justin Sedgman in the white helmet colour. Really good ride by Sedgman up on turns three and four to uh, take the advantage. And meanwhile, the battle on for third place between Hans Anderson in red and Dan Thompson in yellow. And that battle would continue right round to the last lap because uh, Dan Thompson would not give in. Hans Anderson defending hard on the inside in this hit take just two points between the sides. And Dan Thompson's big run round the outside on the third and fourth bend. Hans Anderson in mid-track defending and Hans Anderson just gets to the finish line in third place and watch out for Dan Thompson there coming down after the race is finished. Fortunately, he did get up and make his way into the ambulance, so we hope for some good news there on Dan Thompson. It's now a really close meeting at the East of England Arena. Eight heats gone. It's Peter with 23, Leicester 25. Dave, thank you. Calv, um, it's a close contest. It has been between these two teams all day today. Enjoying it up there? I am indeed. It's um, uh, brilliant. That 5-1 was crucial, I think, in the last race for the Aces because the, the Wolverhampton team have got off to such a good start. And around this track, if, uh, if you give them too much of a lead, it's going to be very difficult for them to actually get right back in the action. But uh, nonetheless, it has been the top two in the league and they're there for a reason. And I'm sure that um, there's no doubt that uh, we'll see plenty of good action throughout this uh, match here this evening. So heat number five is with us, and we'll see Dan Bewley out for the second time. And uh, he failed to score first time out, which was a bit of a surprise. So Dan will be looking to bounce back this time. He'll go from the outside gate, but uh, he's up against a strong pairing here in the Wolverhampton team with Becker and Douglas. Heat number five then, we're on board with Becker. And, uh, this time he'll go from the inside gate. 
where he started from the outside gate in his first ride. Heat number five then on the inside is Luke Becker in the red helmet colour. Tom Brennan alongside him in gate number two in yellow. Ryan Douglas out of gate number three in blue. And off the outside in, in white, excuse me, is Dan Bewley. Bewley looking to up his uh, game here. A uh, bit of a shock when he didn't score in the opening race. Uh, must have been some issues, possibly a few tweaks to the equipment just to get it set up a little bit better. But Bellevue with that 5-1 in the previous uh, race, closing the gap just to the four points. Sam Masters and uh, Zach Cook keenly looking on. As I say, we are on board with Luke Becker. We saw some good shots from him in the opening ride. He's his opening ride, and what a way to come back after missing the beginning of the season with a nastily broken uh, leg and winning your opening ride. That was a great way to settle yourself back into the team. So uh, Rory Schlein and Leon Flynn also keenly looking on. Good team this. Pete Adams will keep them uh, right up to their work, that's for sure. Riders just taking their time here. Start Marshall, bit of extra work by Dan Bewley there, just packing the dirt in. So important on a small track to get that initial reaction away from the tapes, get the bike to really leap forward. So happy now. Green light will be on very shortly. Now it is. Tapes up and we go. Roaring into the first corner and it's the Wolverhampton pair that show first. Bewley's gone awfully wide there, very nearly clips the fence on the way down the back straight. But got to say, the Wolverhampton boys in Becker and Douglas certainly looking very accomplished there. Bewley a little bit out of shape coming off a of turn four. Becker on the inside, Douglas on the outside, the dust flying down that back straight. And the home team responding superbly well here. Looking set for another 5-1. They really are irresistible around this place. Becker now beginning to push on here. Douglas switching to the inside. These two know each other so well. Riding well as a pair. Team riding superbly well. Bewley with no answers. Struggling a little bit in third place. He's giving it his all. Becker out in front looking for back-to-back -back wins on the evening. Douglas now under pressure. Bewley trying one last blast through that last corner. Douglas has gone wide, here comes Bewley up the inside, Becker wins easily, but no, it's a 5-1 to the home team. Responding really well there, after seeing the aces coming through in a 5-1 in the previous race, but Becker, what a return, a dream return for him. Unbeaten so far from his first two rides, superb stuff from his. Douglas uh, was in second place there, coming under pressure in this, uh, late on in the race from Dan Bewley. Just a solitary point for Bewley from two outings so far. So the result of heat number five then is a, a very good ride once again from Luke Becker out in front. Three points for him. Ryan Douglas under a little bit untidy there at times. Two points for him. Dan Bewley trying awfully hard in third place. One point for him and young Tom Brennan just missing out in heat number five. So that lead extended once again to 19 points to 11. And Scotty, this home team are so strong round here. They certainly are, Kelv. Luke Becker, I mean, what a comeback. He's uh, not turned a wheel here all season, and we're on board with him off gate one here. Makes a brilliant start, but Ryan Douglas has made an even better one off gate three. Dan Bewley's out of shot right now, but Luke Becker comes up the inside of Ryan Douglas here. Ryan Douglas is coming across a little bit. That sun can be a little bit of a problem there as you enter that turn, but these two from here romp on to a victory. But Dan Bewley, later on in the race, I want to keep your eye on him because he's making big sweeping turns. He gets away with it sometimes at the Grand Prix and other places, but Brown Belt, uh, Brown Belt for Hampton, sorry, he thinks he's at Bellevue because it's not the place to do it. You see the two boys out front riding together. Nice bit of team riding there from the boys in the red and blue. But Dan Bewley is still out on that wide line, not making any progress up. The two boys all sitting around the inside here. You can see again, just sitting nice. Luke Becker just rolling off the gas just keeping it inside but at this point here this is the only turn see there Dan Bewley in the white gets a turn wrong he's going backwards while Ryan Douglas is moving forwards in the white uh, in the blue sorry but on this corner here Dan Bewley makes the turn correct he comes in sticks almost follows the same line as Ryan Douglas but he hits that little bit of grip up the inside and look at the gains he makes big lesson learned there for the Wolf Bellevue boys if they can see that they've been riding the wrong line but from that point there he almost gets Ryan Douglas on the line over to you, Kelf. Yeah, good analysis, that. Yeah, clearly the wrong choice of line early in the race, but uh, did get it together in the last two laps and very nearly snatched that second place away and clearly shown there just with the change of line. 
and uh, he was able to uh, get himself back into it. But they'll be looking for more from their number one, the Bellevue Aces, because all of a sudden that lead is stretched once again. 19 points to 11. Heat number six then, riders making their way round to the start line with Sam Masters and Steve Worrell, who started superbly well in their opening ride. Heat number one in actual fight, where they picked up the 5-1. They'll be uh, keen to do something, uh, some uh, to do the same. We have got a switch here with uh, Castagna, who replaced Jake Mulford earlier on. It's now the opposite way round, with Mulford coming in for Paco Castagna. Heat number six then is with us, and Grady Kurtz, who was a winner first time out, goes from the inside in white, alongside him Sam Masters and gate number two in red. Mulford coming in for Castagna here, comes out of gate number three in yellow, and Steve Worrell off the outside in blue. And Kurtz was very impressive and was fast and rode the track really absolutely spot on. Mulford now needs to um, try and get away sharpish if they're going to eke into that lead that the Wolves have established after five races. Mark Lemon working hard keenly looking on at his program trying to work out where he's going to make it of course he can use a tactical substitute as well um, but between heats five and 14 apart from heat number eight which is protected but uh, once again all important race for the aces because there's no doubt the wolverhampton team are very much in command here just showing how strong they are at home and remind you the aces are the champions and uh, they're a proud team superb effort last year um, but uh, finding it tough here so far this evening. That was a quick look at Luke Becker, who's enjoying a great return to the team. Really superb stuff from him. So, heat number six then. Start marshals, please. He walks away. Green light is on. Tapes are up, and we go into the first turn. Kurtz makes a great start from the inside. Sam Masters following him through there, trying to get up the inside. Warrell on the outside. Mulford has missed it. But Brady Kurtz, very good in the opening race, his opening race rather, but here comes Worrell, Worrell on the inside. Great move from Worrell, Kurtz went too wide out of turn four and Worrell was there ready to pounce. Superb effort from him, of course, previous teammates when they rode together at Aces, but on opposite teams tonight, Worrell looking great out in front. Kurtz, can he respond? Masters back in third place. Still a heat advantage for the home team, so they'll stretch away, but Kurtz isn't done now. He's coming on strong, hugging that inside, round turns three and four, into the last lap. Terrific speedway out in front. Worrell around the outside, Kurtz up the inside. Fancy Worrell's just about got this covered. Good speedway ride here from Steve Worrell. Took that opportunity early in the race and comes through in flying colours there. Not easy to pass Kurtz. He's in good form. But that was an excellent performance from Steve Worrell to pick up the three points there. Congratulations to him. And once again, the home team pick up an advantage. Four points for them and two to the aces. Stretching the points lead to ten points now after six rides. Very commanding lead. Home crowd rightly pleased with that. Delighted with their performance of their team so far. So the result of heat number six then, Steve Worrell with a terrific ride, three points from him. Brady Kurtz back in second place, two points. Sam Masters back in third, one point for him. And the reserve switch, uh, young Jake Mulford just missing out in heat number six. But uh, Scotty, that was a really classy ride from Stevie Worrell. It certainly was, Kelv. He's, uh, he's really dialed himself in around this Wolverhampton track. Brady Kurtz makes a lightning start off gate one, and he shows his, uh, his class here. He doesn't drift up. A lot of riders would tend to drift up to try to stop the run of Stevie Worrell, but he didn't. But this corner here, he comes in, he lets a bike run, just gets in a little bit of a muddle, and that allows Stevie Worrell to get up the inside. Stevie Worrell in the blue has a little sneaky look across there. He knows there's no way for him to get to that Carlson corridor, so he lets a bike run. Drifts since this turn, and at this point here, you think he's possibly a little bit too wide, but he turns the bike back perfectly up the inside. Brady Kurtz knows he's there, cannot slam the door on him, so his only option is to try to swoop around the outside, but it can't to be. And right here, Stevie Worrell, he'll feel the presence of uh, Brady Kurtz, and he'll know he's there, but he was brave, confident, didn't fall into the trap of trying to slam the door shut on Brady Kurtz. He allowed the bike just to run into that dirt, sit on the edge of it, and from there, he just romps away to three points. Let's throw over to Abby. It's Stevie Wall. He was just at the monitor watching that performance. Stevie, a classy ride, Calvin said. You're watching it back on the monitor, please, of what you saw yourself doing. Yeah, you know, it was, um, 
I didn't, it's not really what I planned going into the bottom corner. You know, I knew Brady was going to run out. Um, kind of got got quite a bit of drive as I entered to help me turn back. And once I got the inside, I knew right the right line for four laps, so I should be all right. I'm beaten in your um, two heats so far. Just dialed into this track, just feel so comfortable? Yeah, you know, getting... Uh, last year was, you know, you could say my, you know, um, what was it called, apprenticeship, you know. Need to step up this year. Um, can't keep using them excuses, so... It started off really well for me here, and I'm enjoying it. Scoring points, and we're winning meetings, so it's good. Stevie, thank you so much. Let's rejoin Calvin. Yeah, thanks, Abby. And uh, interested to hear from Steve Worrell about, uh, you know, settling in last year, but now beginning to really find his feet here. And rides like that, I mean, um, you know, there's no question that boosts your confidence. And it shows that you really have worked out your home track. And, uh, it was um, uh, a terrific effort from him. Heat number seven then, riders are up at tapes. And uh, can the aces respond here? Heat number seven then, Rory Schlein on the inside in red. Gate number two in white is Jaiman Lidsey. Gate number three in blue is Zach Cook. And off the outside is Charles Wright in yellow. Important race here. The aces really do have to dig in here and try and find the key to it. Starting going to be absolutely imperative. And uh, then just making sure you don't uh, ride too wide. Pete Adams there, more than happy with the way his team going about their work tonight. Really have got it under control at this stage, but um, uh, you uh, cannot relax. We are approaching the midway point at heat number eight. Charles Wright, he can be a performer here. I've seen him do some pretty sterling work. And, uh, certainly when um, uh, that outside line works, but the track is drying. There is a bit of dust out there. It's been a windy, sunny day, so the moisture is just beginning to evaporate. But uh, there's no doubt that uh, Rory Schlein and Zach Cook will be favourites here off the inside gate. Schlein, vastly experienced there, keen to get on with it on the inside gate. Start Marshall, he walks away, and we're on with it now. Tapes up, charging into the first corner, it's a smashing start from Lindsay. Wow, out of gate number two, Charles right round the outside, Lindsay hits the front, slides up the inside, here comes right round the outside of turns three and four, winding the throttle on, really is close there, Schlein response, hits that third off there, look at right now, Charles Wright charges up the inside, very tight indeed, Schlein responding, brilliant speedway for second and third, superb there, Cook's involved in it as well, nearly running in the back of Charles Wright, out in front though, Diamond Lindsay who made a really good start initially in his first race, but then failed to score, no such trouble this time, Will Perfect out in front after a really impressive start. Schlein coming on strong in second place, pushing on. Charles Ryder's settled in third place. It really was all action there in the first lap and a half. But uh, this is an impressive ride from the Australian. Lindsay out in front. He wins his first race of the night and a handy 4-2 for the visitors, the aces. And uh, they'll be uh, a touch relieved with that. Brilliant start out of gate two. That really was impressive indeed to get the better of the fast starting Rory Schlein. No mean feat there. And Litsy, once he hit the front, had no real concerns at all. So he'll be much happier about things after a disappointing opening ride, having hit the front initially. So the result of heat number seven here is a smashing ride out in front from Diamond Lidsey. Three points for him. Rory Schlein solid in second place, two points. Charles Wright all action in third place, one for him. And young Zach Cook just missing out in heat number seven. And Scott, that was a much improved performance from Diamond Lidsey there after failing to score first time out. Yeah, it was, Kel. It was a transformation. He made a great start in his first race, the same as he did here, but the first race he just couldn't replicate a bit. He's obviously learned from that first race, and like you said earlier, They've come from Bellevue, which is a big, fast pacey track and maybe needed that first race just to dial himself in. But this first lap here in this bottom bend, Rory Schlein knowing, showing his home track knowledge, use that grip up the inside, get up the inside of Charles Wright. But Charles Wright reads it perfectly well. Rory's gone in deeper there to try to cut back. But Charles Wright slams the door straight, straight across the front of Rory Schlein, pulling a tear off there gets back up the inside but they're all queuing up up the inside here gets very very close and they're all chasing that little bit of grip down the inside Rory Schein desperately trying to pull his tear off but fantastic race for Jamin Lidsey there it's a great race for him and the uh, much much important heat advantage for those boys and uh, yeah so the Bellevue they're still a little bit out of it but they're trying to fight their way back in and uh, I'll throw over to Abby. 
thank you, Scott. They are trying to fight their way back into this meeting. Eight points separates the two teams. Just remember, though, in the first leg earlier today, it was Wolves that had an eight-point lead at one stage, and it finished on a superheat. So we know anything can happen here in Speedway. A quick break. Use that hashtag, WallBell. Join us with all the reaction, and Heat 8 will be after this.
Welcome back to Mama Green. Halfway point of the evening, the score 25-17 to the host Wolverhampton Wolves. Let's head over to the East of England Arena and get an update from Dave Rowe. Well, it turned into a close four contest from the halfway stage with Leicester holding a two-point advantage. Heat nine was a good start by Richie Worrell in blue to move aside. Nick Morris and Jake Allen battling hard to try and get through, but Richie Worrell doing well there for the Panthers. The rider in red, Ben Cook at the back, coming in for the injured Benjamin Basso, and he made a late challenge on Nick Morris on the last lap. Really tight there off the second bend with Ben Cook trying to force his way through, but no way through as Richie Worrell holds on out front. Jake Allen putting a good challenge in around the final term, and it's a win for Richie Worrell in Heat 9. The gap remaining at two points. Leicester in front by 28 points to 26. And the action in Heat 10 saw a fantastic start by Richard Lawson in white from the outside. Ben Cook tussling with Kyle Howarth. That enabled Michael Palmtoff to come through on the inside in red. Good battle here between the two guests. Palmtoff then trying the outside run. Howarth trying to turn back for the inside. Lawson checking off and going clear out in front. Palmtoff making his way around the outside. Actually, gained ground as the race went on, went past his teammate too, but didn't have time to get on terms with Lawson. So a shared heat once again there with Leicester maintaining a narrow two-point advantage. But uh, heat number 11, this could be a massive race in the context of the meeting because fast starting from the Leicester Lions, Max Frick in white and Justin Sedgman in yellow. Niels Christian Ewardson in red unbeaten before this race, but the Lions getting out in front. You have to say Max Frick really is now showing he's every inch of number one in this league. And the signing of Justin Sedgman has been a real key factor in Leicester's season so far. They held the advantage. Niels Christian Ewardson could find no way through he did try hard on lap two but Sedgman establishing himself in second place behind Max Frick and a big big result as far as the Leicester Lions are concerned off the final bend Max Frick and Justin Sedgman with a huge 5-1 to put them six points in front with four heats to go Leicester could be set for their first away win since rejoining the Premiership 11 heats gone it's Peterborough 30 Leicester 36 yeah, it's all going on at Peebo Showground. Just want to touch on a quick thing here. We know Wolverhampton's a pretty tight technical track. I want to just focus here on Dan Beauty. If I just fast forward a little bit here, I'm going to bring Kelvin in a second. But look at the lines of the two Wolverhampton boys. They're all going here. Dan Beaulieu's come in there, and he's going right across here, and he's going to sit himself out in no man's land in a minute, which is very frustrating. Dan's a world-class rider. We know he can ride a bike. But I'm going to bring you in here, Kelvin. At this point, when you're Dan Beaulieu, what's going through your head? Because look at the, the, the amount of ground he's lost on the, the Wolverhampton boys. Well, you actually uh, pinpointed it earlier on, Scott. He was actually just running in too tight and too fast. He was doing the turn too late, wasn't he? And just literally, as you say, the other guys had their wheels in line and he was going past the corner and actually losing a significant amount of ground. And later in that race, Scott, you could see that uh, then Dan actually figured it out and was able to actually then uh, turn the bike a little harder and uh, get the bike pointing in the right direction. And he very nearly got himself into second place when he looked like he was um, struggling just to hang on to a, a solitary point. So, yeah, this place is um, uh, very technical indeed. Heat number eight then, midway point of the evening and uh, eight points in it. Home team on 25 points, 17 points to the Aces. It's been uh, going nicely for the home team. Stevie Worrell riding superbly well this evening, and he's out here. Young Leon Flint is out once again, and uh, just having a few last tweaks to his bike prior to going round to the start line. Tom Brennan here for the Aces. Don't believe there's any changes here, with maybe Jake Mulford possibly taking his last ride. Dan Bewley and Mark Lemon, they're just deep in conversation. Bewley with just two points so far this evening, so um, uh, looking to improve as uh, later in the latter part of the evening. I'm sure he will, more than capable of it, but um, just not quite clicking into gear in his first couple of rides. Number eight then, on the inside is Leon Flint in blue. Gate number two in yellow is Jake Mulford, so they haven't changed the reserves this time. On gate number three in red is Steve Worrell. Really nice ride last time. And on the outside is Tom Brennan in white. Gate number four. Brennan's got to produce here, but Steve Worrell is the form man. Wolverhampton boys just having a chat there, quite clearly relaxed and pleased with the way things are going. 
As I say, I reiterate, fabulous effort this afternoon with that super heat. Just came on out on the uh, wrong end of that, but 45 point all. Oh, what a night! What an afternoon! Excuse me, it was, and uh, they're picking up nicely here this evening. Bellevue um, with a 4-2 last time. They've had a 5-1 as well, so they're not out of it, and things can change around very quickly indeed. Heat number eight then tapes up, and we're away. And the Wolverhampton boys absolutely Jeff fulfilled. Worrell once again hitting the front, going down the back straight. Brennan up the inside, Tom Brennan. Oh, great effort from him, pushing Steve Worrell wide. They both run wide in actual fact, and Worrell now respond, trying to steam up the inside. Nothing to choose between the two out in front. Leon Flynn back in third, but Brennan hangs on. Great effort from Tom Brennan on that opening lap. Worrell now, can he do anything about the young English boy out in front? Brennan. Of course, coming from that Eastbourne track, Arlington, which was tight and technical, so he should be able to adapt, and he's looking good here. Worrell back in third place, Mulford working hard out the back, trying to get the better of Leon Flynn. But that fine effort Mulford's pulled up, trouble for him. Looking set for a three-all here now, but Tom Brennan, this is a return to form. His best ride of the night easily wins in fine style by taking and getting the better of... Uh, Steve Worrell there, that was a great effort there from uh, Tom Brennan. They need more of that. Shared heat, so it's still eight points between the two teams. With encouraging signs there for uh, uh, young Tom Brennan. Steve Worrell possibly just caught there going into the bottom corner. So Tom Brennan out in front, three points for him. Stevie Worrell back in second place, two points. Leon Flint in third, and Jake Mulford had some sort of mechanical issue. He fails to score. Heat number eight is shared then. 28 points to 20, and Scott, that was a really good ride from Tom Brennan. When you consider how well Stevie Worrell's going, it was a brave move down the inside. It certainly was, Kelv. I mean, uh, Tom Brennan, he knows how to ride these small tracks, like you said in commentary there, he's come from Eastbourne, but it was a brave move. He makes a very, very smart first turn here. Brave turn up the inside of Stevie Worrell, great control to keep that front wheel just hovering along the ground, but you can see there he's just a little bit hesitant. He doesn't want to turn back too early to allow Stevie Worrell to run around the outside, but a brave move here. Slams the door shut. Look how close it is there. Stevie Worrell's turning the bike as hard as he can. At that point, Kelv, in Stevie Worrell's position, sometimes that can be quite scary because you don't actually know if you're going to avoid the rider in front. That's right. He's come in quite narrow, isn't he, Scott? And he's had to really... Um, turn the bike awfully hard, see, you can yeah, see there. He's the... really got the handbrake yeah. on and uh, it's very close. It was indeed and uh, just momentarily he was a touch concerned whether he'd run in the side of Brennan but he avoided him and he picked up two points and uh, the home team maintaining that lead nicely into heat number nine. Riders um, pushing off. Well, we'll see Luke Becker again who's unbeaten so far on his return to the Wolverhampton team. And um, uh, he did a great effort out in uh, Slovakia, where he won his uh, Grand Prix Challenge qualifier. Uh, I know that Greg Hancock was with him, keeping an eye on him, and that was a great effort with your first meeting back to go through to the GP Challenge. And now he's back riding in Britain with two meetings in a day. He'll be sore tonight, that's for sure, hobbling around before the evening, but uh, isn't slowing him down on that bike here tonight. So Becker and Douglas are the pairing. And uh, Pete Adams will be satisfied with the work so far. No real concerns in that camp. They're keeping the aces at bay. But they have got the spectacular Paco Castagna to deal with here, so we'll keep an eye out for him. Heat number nine then, and we'll see uh, Ryan Douglas going from the inside in blue. Brady Kurtz, the captain of the aces, will go from gate number two in white. Luke Becker, unbeaten will come out of uh, gate number three in red and Paco Castagna will go from the outside in yellow. Castagna was very sharp away last time and rode the inside very well. Uh, he may have to do something slightly different here, but uh, there is always the option of possibility of a turn back in that first corner. We'll see how that works out. Tom Brennan there in the uh, foreground was uh, a very good winner of heat number eight. All is not lost here. Of course, the aggregate point is looking set for the Wolves. They'll pick up an extra point tonight if they uh, manage to stay out in front. That is new to British Speedway in uh, 2023. Uh, so that's the second leg in one day. That is up for grabs tonight, and it's no question that the home team are looking favourite for that at this stage. On board with Becker again. 
taken out of the uh, gate number three this time. Here we go then. Tapes up now, and away they go. Hit the first corner, it's Douglas. Around the outside is Brady Kurtz, roaring on. Becker coming through into third place. Kurtz is vulnerable there on the outside. Can he make that outside run work? Because he's certainly working hard. Brilliant move from Kurtz. Where did he find that from? Totally committed to the outside. Made it work a treat. Absolutely jet propelled. Firing away out in front. Ryan Douglas back in second place with Luke Becker looking like he's going to drop his first point of the night. Castagna is out the back. But Brady Kurtz riding like a captain here. Showing great speed and commitment to the track. Loving that outside run, making it work. He's into the last lap now. Generating lots of speed, enjoying his night here. He's only dropped a point prior to this ride. He's going to pick up eight points now out of his three outings. Looking good through that last corner. That's a really impressive ride from Kurtz. Douglas back in second place with Luke Becker in third. Um, no real damage done as regards the scoreline. The eight points is retained for the lead for the home team. Heat advantage is what they need, the Bellevue Aces, and Castagna off of the outside gate just couldn't quite make an impact that time. Heat number nine, the result. Brady Kurtz, really impressive out in front. Three points for him. Ryan Douglas in second place, two points. Luke Becker packing in for that third place. One point for him, and Castagna missing out in heat number nine. And a great ride for Brady Kurtz. And Scotty, that was really brave, wasn't it? And he found that extra grip. I wasn't sure he was going to do it, but he pulled it off in fine style. Well, it was a fantastic race from Brady. And he's riding the track kind of different to anybody else. He's kind of throwing the Wolverhampton textbook out the window. Good first turn for a good start from Ducky there. Just gives Brady a nudge. And that kind of almost does him a favour. Gives him that run down the outside. Has all that speed to go into that third and fourth bend. And he commits. Brave move, committed to the outside. Dougie sees him there. He obviously has sensed it before he looked, but there's nothing he could do. And he swoops around the outside. And it's almost at this point now where the other boys we can see on board here, Ruth Luke Becker, who's had a great night, but he's sitting here in third. He's got the prime seat here. See Brady Kurtz just goes in there, just leaves his turn that little bit later. He's out of shot here, but swoops around the outside of Ryan Douglas there and romps on for the win. And it's at this point in the night where some of the boys are going to start to look at Brady Kurtz, look at the line he's riding, and start to question whether they start to make changes to their setup because all the Wolverhampton boys are sitting down low, possibly getting that little bit too much wheel spin now, but Brady Kurtz allowing that bike to run there. Very nice, super smooth style, just lets the bike run around the outside. At that point there, for Brady Kurtz, he'll sense, he'll have seen Ryan Douglas look over. He knows he's got the speed, he knows he's got the drive, and he knows he's got three points in the bag. Absolutely right. Eight points out of nine, a good effort from the captain. He needs a little bit more support, particularly from the number one man, Dan Bewley, who's had a disappointing evening so far. And uh, we'll see Dan a couple of times more at least, and he's 11 and 13. Um, uh, but uh, there's no doubt that um, Brady Kurtz um, uh, generated speed off that bottom corner that nobody else has managed to do so far this evening. So very interesting indeed. And the track is drying. You can see that uh, there's a little bit more dust about. And uh, the track is slickening off quite a bit. And uh, a few tweaks to the equipment just to follow the track conditions. That's what the riders will be keeping their eyes on and what Scott was uh, talking about just a few moments ago so heat number 10 31 points to 23 and uh, as I say it has been pretty straightforward for the home team so far uh, whether the aces have got anything more to give well Jaiman Lidsey may have because he was very impressive last time with winning his first race here after failing to score first time out and uh, he's been sharp away from the tapes needs to keep that going but gate number four is not easy we're just waiting for the last rider to appear now. And that it will be Steve Worrell, who has been uh, busy. He was just out in heat number eight. So just the one ride between his uh, fourth ride now. And Steve's had a good night of speedway. He'll be pleased with his work. There's eight points as well. So heat number 10 then. Steve Wall will go from the inside gate this time in blue. Gate number two in yellow is Charles Wright. In gate number three in red is Sam Masters. And off the outside is the fast starting Jamin Lidsley. But you can see the track there in front of Jamin Lidsley. You can see how that track is polished. So the run to the first turn is compromised. So you're going to have to do something 
pretty special. You're going to have to really launch away. And if you don't, then there is a plan B. You might be able to chop back to the inside if you're lucky. And uh, we'll keep uh, There's that racing line. It's exactly where, and it polishes the surface, and there isn't quite as much grip where the darker material on the inside gates is possibly just that little bit more dry. Here we go, then. Heat number 10 of the Aces got anything here. Green lights on, tapes up, and we're away. Worrell makes a good start on the inside. Fabulous start in actual fact, and he's joined by Masters, who runs really wide. Diamond Lindsay trying to come in. Charles Wright in the second place. Masters is stuck on the outside. Lindsay dives through on the inside into third. Here comes Charles Wright, clearly taking uh, the same line as uh, Brady Kurtz there. But Wall's out in front, the dust is flying down the back straight. Masters has now come through in the third place. Good response from the captain of the Wolves. Wall, Warrell out in front. Charles Ryder pushed right to the checkered flag, you know that. Warrell is having a fabulous night. Charles Wright riding wide, now chopping back to the inside, trying to keep the pressure on Warrell out in front. Into the last lap then. Looking like Worrell's got it pretty much under control, riding superbly well. The inside gate working so well for him. One last blast through the last turn, and Stevie Wild has won another race there. Great effort from him. Charles Wright gave it absolutely everything, with Sam Masters coming through in third place, but that's been a great effort from his four rides tonight, just dropping just the one point to Tom Brennan and Heat 8. But apart from that, he's been will perfect for Steve Worrell. Here this evening, three points out in front. Charles Wright back in second place. Two points for him. Sam Masters, one point. And Jaiman Lidsey, an up and down night for him, failing to score after winning last time. Gate four not working for him. But for Steve Worrell, it's been a great night, uh, Scotty. And uh, once again, he really nailed that start on the inside. Yeah, Stevie Worrell's been on fire tonight. Like you said, he made a fantastic start, really took full advantage at inside gate. Just had a little nibble there. I think he got away with a little bit of a roller there, but we'll let him have it. Made a brilliant start. And the thing is now, he's he knows that uh, Sam Master on the outside, he has a look there, but he just can't slow down enough because he will have sensed the presence and the pressure of Charles Wright. And we know Charles Wright throws everything at it, but in the background here, Sam Masters, look at that. He's gone over gate two there, up the inside, forces Jamin Lidsey out a little bit wide, gets up on that Carlson corridor and sneaks away but all the actions up front Steve Worrell riding a fantastic race but Charles Wright is pushing all over him but we can see here look at the dust and the roofs flying up there I think they might have to put a little bit of water on the track at some point but again the Wolves managed to stretch their lead just that little bit and uh, Steve Worrell nice little wheelie always nice to, to have a little wheelie after the race celebrating style just like that Kelf yeah, he did celebrate in style, and rightly so, because he's had a smashing evening, just dropping one point out of his four rides so far this evening, and uh, every chance possibly of seeing later on in Heat 15, potentially. So here we see Heat number 11. We will see Dan Bewley again, and uh, he'll be hoping for better luck this time. Uh, Bewley, such a top performer, but it hasn't been his evening so far, so can he turn it around? He's more than capable. Uh, Mark Lemon will be hoping so if they can put some pressure on the home team in these latter races in the second half of the evening. Tom Brennan, who was very impressive to get uh, to the only rider to lower the colours of Worrell this evening with that uh, charge up the inside in heat number eight. Just uh, getting a feel for the track. The track has slicked off quite significantly. And uh, as I say, gearing will be changed, possibly carburation and ignition as well, just to get that grip. Grip equals speed. And uh, they'll be looking for that. Rory Sline actually just um, uh, doing a practice start as well with the mechanic out just to check the bike over before he makes his way round to the start line. So Zach Cook is the partner for Schlein. Schlein's happy and he's on his way round now for us. He won't be too long before he's up at tapes. So with um, uh, Beauty on the inside, every chance, if he can replicate something similar to what Worrell did, then we may see him hit the front for the first time this evening. But Schlein is no slouch, and uh, when he's on form, he's a very good starter indeed. Heat number 11, then Dan Bewley's on the inside in white. Alongside him is Rory Schlein in gate two in red. Gate number three in yellow is Tom Brennan, and off the outside in blue is Zach Cook. It's not easy from the outside. And if uh, the Bellevue Aces are going to have anything to say about this meeting, they need to now 
really start piling in the points. Gates one and three, possibly the best place to be right now. Certainly that inside gate still got plenty of grip in there. And uh, Dan Bewley just packing the dirt down, trying to make sure he can get off to a really good start this time. And uh, they need a heat advantage though. Heat winds are not good enough. Tom Brennan, an encouraging ride last time in heat number eight. Um, when he hit the front and certainly looked really accomplished once he did so more than capable of picking up big points here Massive race in the context of the outcome of the evening. Here we go then We're away. Julie's made a much better start. Brennan's there with him. Chops back to the inside Looking good for the aces down the back straight for the first time. Schwein's now into third place Julie's trapped on the outside. It's going to be very key indeed here to now slam the door shut because Schlein is there lurking. Bewley elects to go wide, very wide, and once again, it's going to be vulnerable because Schlein's hugging that inside. Bewley round the outside in turns three and four, desperately trying to get alongside his partner. He does. That's exactly what he needed to do. He had to work awfully hard to do so. Brennan on the inside. Bewley hits the front. They're looking good and set fair for a 5-1. Brennan's the one under pressure now. Rory Schlein's lurking in third place, searching for a way through with Cook at the back. Bewley riding in a different county now, loving it out on the outside. Through the last corner, and Bewley picks up his first win of the night, and it's a massive 5-1 for the visitors. The champions there, the aces, producing off gates one and three. Bewley had to work hard there, really hard to get his nose in front. He was awfully vulnerable to Rory Schlein, but he found that little bit of extra grip and speed, got his nose in front, and once he did, he dominated the race. Brilliant ride from him. Just the six points now. Heat number 11, the result. Bewley out in front, wins his first race of the night. Tom Brennan, a solid ride in second place. Two points for him, and Rory Schlein in third, one point. Zach Cook missing out. But that was vital for the Aces if they're going to put any pressure on the home team, Scotty, because they were under a lot of pressure. Yeah, much needed 5-1. Like you said, it puts them back within six points now and in fine contention. Dan Bewley takes advantage of inside gate. Just watch, look at his left hand, just working that clutch all the way to that first turn, get maximum drive. He slams the door shut on Rory Schlein, turns the bike nice and hard. I said earlier he was making two bigger runs, but he keeps the bike nice and low there. As he comes out, he just drifts out a little bit in from the inside again. Dan Bewley working that clutch all the way to that inside. He likes to run on the outside, drifts out. Out on the inside, out on the outside there. Tom Brennan, look how much gains Tom Brennan made by hitting that Carlson corridor up the inside. That made Dan Bewley have to work overtime to try and get there, but he stuck to it. Obviously, he's watched what his teammate Brady Kurtz did earlier by using that outside line, chasing out and wide. Still here, the boys chasing up the inside, but um, Dan Bewley there under pressure. Rory Schlein knows this place, hugging that inside, but Dan Bewley persevered. Got the three points, got the 5-1, celebrating in style. Just look at that. Over to you, Abby. Dan Bewley, the sort of performance that we are used to expecting from the GP superstar. We have four heats remaining, just six points now, separating the two sides. What are your thoughts? Join the conversation. Use that hashtag wall bell, and we'll see you after this.
An important 5-1 for the Aces in that last heat brings them back into this meeting. We're just six points separating now and we've got four heats remaining. What a weekend of sport we've got coming up. June the 10th and 11th, mark your diaries. It's an incredible lineup of action across Discovery Plus and Eurosport with an unprecedented weekend of champions, including the French Open Women's Final, the iconic Le Mans 24 hour race, action from the Speedway World Championship, racing from the Mountain Bike World Cup at Lenzerheide, road cycling, plus the men's final at Roland Garros. And of course, there's plenty of action to enjoy from the French Open from now until then with full coverage every day but with british speedway let's head to peterborough now and get the latest with dave Rowe. leicester six points in front with four races to go panthers boss rob Lyon throwing everything in to hit 12 Niels chris nevison in blue as a tactical sub making it round the outside off the second bend but richie warrell in red riding as the injury rider replacement for benjamin basso he's being squeezed out by richard lawson and jake allen panthers urgently requiring a race advantage from this race but warrell being squeezed out everson stretching clear out in front more action here on the last lap of hit 12 with the leicester riders switching their lines lawson and white going for the inside richie warrell trying hard on the final turn around the outside but no way through and a shared heat keeping Leicester with that six point lead despite the win for Niels Chris Neverson. Massive heat number 13 gets underway. It's a good start from Michael Palm Toft in red, but charging across from the outside there is Nick Morris in yellow. Everson in blue coming around the outside too, and Max Frick is squeezed out. And Nick Morris here leads for Leicester with Everson in second place, Palm Toft in third, and the unbeaten Max Frick so far at the back. But his teammate Nick Morris has the advantage as Leicester continue to march on here at the East Wigan Arena. Although Everson in blue trying to make his move on the inside, superb ride by Nick Morris to get back round the outside into Ben three. Morris holding on out in front only two points so far now Michael Palm Toft in red almost follows the fence on turn four and that might bring Frick back into play in the white helmet colour Max Frick coming hard down the inside of Michael Palm Toft trying to split the Panthers pairing Palm Toft again well wide off the top turn up the inside comes Max Frick into third place massive massive move there for the Leicester Lions Nick Morris moving clear out in front Everson in second place and Frick coming through for third and a 4-2 in heat 13 is taking Leicester closer and closer to an away win from this meeting big win for Nick Morris second place Niels Chris Neverson Max Frick coming back for third a 4-2 there for the Leicester Lions just two heats to go now it's Peterborough 35 Leicester 43 yeah, I'm down here on the first and second bend at Wolverhampton. We know this is a Carlson corridor, but if you just pan across here, you can see that light, shady bit there that Kel's been talking about. That's all slick. Now, they've been working on the track in the break here. They've ripped all up on the inside. Now, there were some ridges here, which when you come out this corner, you see a lot of the boys are kind of lifting. It's because they're hitting all this soft, this grippy stuff down low. But this here is quite slick. What they can do, though, is right just where the cameraman is, this white line is nice and low, so the riders can actually get their front wheel right over there as long as their back wheel doesn't go over there safe, so they can get their back wheel on all this fresh grip and take full advantage of that Carlson Corridor. The tricky area is when we come to the mid-track here. This is all loose, loose stuff here. This is kind of up here is almost going to be no man's land. This is where bikes set up, where they're going to make those changes in the brake. It's going to come into its own, and the boys then going to start to commit out to here, where they've ripped it here, they're now starting to put a little bit of water on, which it needed. It's not dry and dusty out here. Just cameraman come this way so we don't get splattered by the camera. Um, but they're putting water on. The tr water truck's going to come around now. They've gone around with the little spikes, dug all this up. When this packs in and that water goes on it, I hope and I believe this line will start to use work as long as they've got the bike set up right. It's going to be fun. It's going to be interesting. Kelv, what do you think, mate? You're seeing what they're doing with the track here. Do you think this outside line is going to start to work as the night goes on? Well, Scotty, we've seen a couple of guys do it, haven't we? We've seen Beauty to have a go at it, and we've seen Brady Kurtz make it work. Not many of the home riders have actually done that. They've, um, but they've been sort of hugging that inside. That's where traditionally they like to ride. But maybe that little bit of moisture in it now, Scott, may just actually make that outside a little bit more beneficial with the, that middle of the track just being so hard. So it'll be interesting to see. But um, I think that... Um, for Bellevue, actually, I think they'll be quite pleased if the outside line begins to work because they're accustomed to the bigger track, aren't they? I think so, definitely for your likes of Dan Bewley and Brady Kurtz was making it work early doors. None of the other boys could do that. But interestingly, 
I've come down. I don't normally get down here in the interval when you come here as a rider, and they really have worked on the inside. It is literally only a few inches wide, but those home track boys will know it's there. But in order to get to there, they're going to have to drift out a little bit on the entry into the turn, which could leave themselves vulnerable. Somebody like Charles Wright, who's not afraid to dive up the inside, Tom Brennan. But it is that mid, mid track there could be vulnerable, but uh, I'm excited to go racing, Kelf. Good stuff then. Big, uh, big last few races here. And uh, the Bellevue Aces have battled hard here. They've looked um, uh, like very vulnerable at times. And when it went to 10 points, I must say that it was uh, looking like game over. But uh, they've battled away. They haven't thrown the towel in at all. And uh, they have made a change here in uh, this upcoming race with a tactical substitution. Um, we've got Brady Kurtz coming in, and uh, Paco Castagna has been replaced by Brady Kurtz. Kurtz, who has been going great guns. Jaiman Lidzi is the other rider for the Bellevue Aces, who's had two last places and a fine win, so he'll be hoping that he can find the key to winning again here. Six points in it then, and uh, four races to come for you. And uh, can the Bellevue Aces build on that uh, good ride there last time out by uh, Tom Brennan and Dan Bewley? That really was a fine ride by both of them. And Dan, Dan Bewley in particular did make that outside run work. You can see there just the, that little bit of water going on just might be coming at the right time of the evening. We will wait with bated breath to see how it pans out. We're on board, of course, with Luke Becker, who's had a really good night on his return. He's uh, scored seven points plus a bonus from his three outings so far. So has done a good job for his team so far. Heat number 12 then. Brady Kurtz coming in as a tax sub on the inside in yellow. Luke Becker alongside him in gate number two in red. Right next door to the start marshal. Don't think as an away rider you get away with that. Dan Bewley, sorry, excuse me. Diamond Lidsey coming out of gate number three in white and Leon Flint goes from the outside in yellow. Once again, gates one and three. This might just be handy for the Aces. Can they make it work again and close in and really get uh, a bit of pressure on this home team? They could turn it around. The opportunity's there. <laughs> Start Marshall there. Just looking at his feet. We're looking at what sort of boots he's wearing this evening. Um, but um, I do feel that if that was an away rider, he may well be being shoveled, shoved over to the uh, to his left. Um, but um, sometimes you can get away with that. There might just be a little bit of fresh dirt there. But a uh, huge gap between gates, uh, the riders on gates one and two. But uh, Kurtz is the man to keep your eyes on on that inside gate. He could be very useful indeed there. He's ridden well tonight for the Aces. He's battled hard, just dropped one point. There you see just about inside the line here we go then heat number 12 everything to race for here tapes are up kurtz has made a smashing start on the inside lids is there as well becker following uh, kurtz through on that inside and he hangs on in second place good stuff from him leon flint is out the back but it's looking like a 4-2 it is a 4-2 for all the visitors Kurtz is away, looking good out in front. That four, he's holding it throughout the evening. Jaiman Lidsey has been up and down, but it's hanging on. A vital third place. This would close the gap once again to four points. Race is running out. Tension building here at Monmore Green. Kurtz out in front, using that outside line, finding the grip. Becker back in second place, hugging the inside, still not tempted to move out wide with Liam. Jaiman Lidsey back in third place. Kurtz has ridden, now he chops to the inside, just experimenting a little bit. Looking over his shoulder, one more turn now for Kurtz. He has ridden another sterling race here. Smashing ride from him, Becker hanging on in second place, but the Aces closing in. Oh, this match all of a sudden beginning to turn around. And fair play to the champions, they have ridden so well. They could have thrown the towel in earlier on. They were looking out of sorts in actual fact. But uh, all of a sudden, with three massive races to come, 38 points to 34. Brady Kurtz doing a great job. Three points out in front. Luke Becker hanging on in second place. Two points. Jaiman Lidsey picking up that vital third place for the 4-2. And Leon Flint back in uh, failing to score. But uh, there's no doubt, Scott, that uh, the Bellevue Aces have shown great resolve here because they really were looking, well, just out of it early on. 
Yeah, it all paid off there. Brady Kurtz, he's just walked past me and uh, he's on fire tonight. He's really the man of the moment off the inside gate. Really low down on the inside off a fresh bit of dirt. Sits around the inside. We talked about it in the break there where they'd ripped that inside. And look at the gains he makes by hitting that sweet spot coming out of the turn. You can see they've watered the outside. It's a bit darker. Luke Becker having a good first meet him back but he can't quite get across Brady Kurtz he makes a brilliant start here in the yellow look at that well he said it hit it the front wheel over that line the back wheel and all that fresh grip on the inside there and he takes full advantage of it puts the aces back in the shop window only a few points in it now and you have to remember these boys got a proper hammering when they came here early in the year so Mark Lemmer must be pleased with the way things are going for the aces tonight Indeed, and that man has been instrumental in it. He's played his part and has certainly played the uh, captain's role. And that score chart for him is looking very healthy indeed. And uh, there's no doubt we're going to see him again. He's got back-to-back -back rides here, so there will be a short delay while uh, the referee gives uh, Brady Kurtz a little more time just to prepare himself for the huge Heat 13 here really is uh, quite an attractive lineup with Dan Bewley, Brady Kurtz for the Aces and Slyne and Masters for the home team. All is not lost here, that's for sure. So um, uh, Brady Kurtz just having a bit of a debrief there with Jimon Lidsey, just um, having a chat about that last race with Tom Brennan, who was uh, replaced earlier on. Certainly um, uh, it's uh, worked a treat so far. And uh, this is a little unexpected. I think a lot of people in this stadium, all of a sudden the crowd, probably a touch tense now, with um, uh, certainly the Aces showing uh, great resolve to come right back into the thick of this with just the four points. So let's get a bit more reaction now down in the pits with Abby. Yeah, Mark, I'm going to just repeat what Calvin said, but your team just showing great resolve. Yeah, they have done for the last couple of years. There's you know, a real strong character that we have here you know, in Manchester, so uh, they're showing it tonight, and they, they needed to. They showed it this afternoon, and uh, they're doing it again tonight, but a little bit to go. You've worked the programme hard. It was a very useful tactical sub. Brady Kurtz just riding a completely different line to anyone else, but um, a massive captain's performance tonight from him. Yeah, sure. I mean, obviously, we need Brady and uh, Dan to do it again. They, they both like that outside line, so um, hopefully they've got a bit of a, you know, a tactic between them, uh, a bit of strategy going on there. But one might go the inside. But yeah, obviously we need, uh, if we can get a 5-1 back here and then obviously we, we feel quite confident going into Heat 15. So uh, Paco's doing a good job at uh, number six and um, the, uh, the boys are chipping in and working well. It's good to see Tom sort of come back after, you know, you know sort of a poor start. And um, yeah, that's that's really pleasing to, to see because, you know, probably two years ago he would have probably spat the dummy out and the bikes would be in the van by now. But uh, he's definitely progressed nicely and um, yeah, we're happy with those things. What was being said amongst the guys? Obviously, Brady and Dan ride in a different line, as we mentioned, but in terms of you having that 10-point deficit, to not throw in the towel and, and make it four points, it could go down to another super heat. That'd be pretty cool, wouldn't it? Yeah, it was pretty exciting this morning for probably the, the, the punters, but uh, not necessarily for the management. But, uh, yeah, well, that's what we're working on. So, um, you know, let's, let's see how it goes. But, no, the boys uh, obviously just work on the process, really. Thank you so much for chatting to us. As always, Mark, let's um, head back to Scott Nichols. Yeah, thanks, Abby. Just while Brady gets his breath, we'll focus on the man in the moment here, Brady Kurtz in the yellow. They just done that track prep, and we said when we were doing that how they'd ripped that inside up. And Brady in the yellow here just comes off the start, but he turns it back. If I pause it right here, his front wheel is actually right over the white line. The white line's here, but his back wheel is clear. As long as his back wheel doesn't go over that white line, then he's good to go. But the gains he makes by he gets his wheels in line. But if I just come back a little bit here, I was saying about it earlier where you've got the slick spots, but you just watch how his body angle is here and he, then he'll lean forward a little bit, then he'll lean back up again as he exits the turn because he doesn't want that bike lift too much, keeping his head right up the front. As he gets to the down the straight, he then starts to put his weight back, allowing the bike to get that full traction from there. He just moves out. You saw Luke Becker there lift aggressively. That's where you've got these slick spots, these light spots, and you get these darker bits where there's the grip. And that's where the boys have to be alert. They have to be on their money. They have to be paying attention to what they're doing because on these short tracks, you're running a, a kind of a, a, a bigger sprocket, so the bike is going to rev more aggressively. So when it does catch those little bits of grip, it is going to lift. It is going to launch very hard. But the boys are going out, ready for heat 13. Brady Kurtz, a man at the moment. Can he deliver again? Over to you, Kelf. Well, he'll be hoping so. Certainly Mark Lemon will be hoping so, Scotty. Good analysis of the track there with the way it's working and an absolutely textbook first corner there from Brady Kurtz. It really did work a treat. 
Massive heat 13 then, everybody. Don't take your eyes off this. I sense that the home team, the gates one and three, just may have been coming at the right time. Two and four here for um, uh, the Bellevue Aces with Kurtz, who's been in fine form, going from that outside gate. That's not going to be easy at all, but uh, we will wait and see exactly how it all pans out. But um, in the context of the result, and the aggregate point, all of a sudden, everything to race for right now. And Pete Adams, maybe a touch nervous right now. Heat 13 then, Sam Masters will go from the inside in the red helmet colour. Gate number two in white is Dan Bewley, back to winning ways last time out. Rory Slyne out of gate number three in blue and Brady Kurtz off the outside in yellow. Slyne's a good starter, so is Masters. Pressure on the home team now. They were in cruise control earlier on in the first half of the meeting, but suddenly the Aces have battled hard and they fought their way back into this meeting, and that's to their credit because it could have been just very straightforward for the Wolves, but it's not the case now. And uh, the Aces have shown great... Well, they've shown why they're champions. Um, they're not quite as strong, in my opinion, as they were last season, but uh, they're doing a great job here tonight. And they've relied heavily on their captain, and he is out here once again. Bewley, who started slowly, certainly turned on the form last time when he got round the outside and picked up a handy 5-1 and got back to winning ways. So he'll be much happier about it. But one and three may just have come in the right time here for the home team. We will see if that pays dividends for them now. Big heat 13, love these races. Grand Prix star there. Dan Bewley, Sam Masters and Rory Slime, vastly experienced riders, of course. Here we go then, heat 13. Green lights on, tapes are up and real away. Bewley, Masters gets there, Slime now dropping back to the inside. Bewley's on the outside, down that back straight, but it's Masters, he shows in front. Terrific first turn from him. Kurtz now coming through in the third place. Oh, that's tight there, Masters had to slam the door. Shot on Bewley down the start and finish straight on the opening lap. Kurtz is in the thick of the action. Schlein is out the back, but Masters is under pressure. They're going to come at him on the inside, on the outside. Bewley coming on strong once again. Masters doesn't know quite where to look. Look at Bewley right round the outside. Can he produce the speed? Masters, right, he's riding over every grain of shale on the track right now, trying to cover the moves of Dan Bewley in second place. One lap to go. Masters out in front, riding for his life right now because Beauty now chopping to the inside. No, he doesn't. He elects to go one last time round the outside. And that is a great ride from Masters. That is a superb ride under huge pressure from Dan Beauty. Beauty just threw the kitchen sink at him there throughout the four laps. But Masters showed great composure out in front to pick up a vital win for the home team to maintain that four point lead with two races to go still everything to race for <laughs> masters he knows he's been in quite a battle there and the home crowd delighted with him the captain of the wolves producing when he absolutely had to fine display from him smashing ride and a great speedway race result of heat 13 there masters out in front vital three points for him dan beauty working overtime in second place two points brady kurtz one point for him and Roy Slime missing out in Heat 13. That's what league racing is all about, Scott. And that was a terrific ride from Sam Masters. Man, there was an awful lot of pressure on Sam Masters there. <laughs> he had those boys all over him. Sam Masters off gate one. He knows his place inside it. He knows where he needs to be. Just hits that little bit grip. He misses that sweet, sweet spot down on the inside, but he's got it all covered. But at this point here, he's got them one inside, one outside. He slams the door shut on Dan Bewley there. That was hard, but he had to do it. He knew otherwise Dan would have got the run on him, but a smart, smart race for Sam Masters here. And what I have to say is a lot of composure from Sam Masters here, Kelv, because he would have felt an awful lot of pressure. His heart rate, heart rate would have been through the roof, especially right here as he knows those boys are there. He can feel them. Dan Bewley is so light and he generates so much speed. He's very good at making these small tracks ride big, but Sam Masters, a very, very composed race. And I think that was a huge, huge race for the Wolverhampton Wolves to keep that four-point lead coming into Heat 14. It was indeed, Scott. Uh, a massive performance from Masters. And uh, the captain coming through in fine colours there, but still work to be done. 
As I said, prior to heat number 13, it still remains the same with two races to go. Everything to race for. All three points up for grabs here. Will we get a super heat? Wow. Two in one day. Wow. You wait for a bus and then two come along at the same time. There we go. Heat 14 then. We've got uh, Paco Castagna, I believe, coming out here this time with a change on the reserve switch by Mark Lemon. We'll just confirm that for you, but I did sense that it is Castagna. But um, uh, it's uh, Charles Wright out here as well, and they've got Gates Runner. Yeah, it is Paco Castagna coming in, and Paco's done a good job so far this evening. Heat 14. Charles Wright on the inside in the white helmet colour. Zach Cook alongside him in gate number two in blue. Paco Castagna, the reserve switch now, coming out of gate number three in yellow. And Ryan Douglas goes from the outside in red. Tension still high. Super Speedway meeting we're enjoying here on Bank Holiday Monday. It's been a lovely day. It's a bit chilly now, but uh, the racing is keeping us certainly very warm indeed. It's red hot out there on the Momo Green track tonight. And these two big hitters, top two in the league at this stage, going head-to-head -to -head today on Bank Holiday Monday, home and away. Fabulous day of Speedway. Pete Adams there, just calmly going about it. Sam Masters there, what a ride that was. That was uh, just what they needed, just to keep it at bay. Rory Schlein missing out in Heat 13, but uh, Heat 14, nonetheless, just as important, that's for sure. Uh, can they produce once again? Well, will the Aces get the better of the home team here with gates one and three? Here we go then, heat 14. Green lights about to come on. Snart Marshall's happy, he moves away. Lights on. Tapes are up now and we're away. Charles Wright has made a smashing start. Castagna's there with him. They hit the front. Oh, tried the first corner. Oh, that's drama coming out of turn two. Charles Wright's on his feet straight away. Ryan Douglas coming through on the inside there, just clouted the side of Charles Wright. I fear for Ryan Douglas. Uh, Willie Dishington, the referee, will have a decision to make here. And uh, Charles Wright up immediately, clutching his arm. But um, uh, Ryan Douglas is still on the track, but uh, a very forceful move from Douglas there, and he certainly clipped Charles Wright on the exit of the corner, that's for sure, with the extra grip right down on the inside there. Just got so much grip and just surged through, but um, uh, I wonder whether he may well be the one to be excluded here. So a decision to make. Good to see Charles Wright up and about, but concern for, for Ryan Douglas. He's up on his feet. That's good news indeed. Excellent. So both riders are OK. So now we will be waiting with uh, this is a key decision now in the context of the uh, result we'll watch it again they hit the first turn right hits the first turn castagna's on the outside look at douglas making this big switch back to the inside makes that grip and then just collects right on the way through and uh, there was very little racing room there at all and i just sensed that ryan douglas after a very good move for that plan b with making that early decision to chop back to the inside. Charles Wright is desperately trying to get there and he just clips in there. He's past him, but there wasn't a lot of racing room. So a big decision now for the referee to make. And um, it could be a massive one, which either way it goes. So it does appear that the red exclusion light is on so that Ryan Douglas is out of the rerun. And all of a sudden, this meeting is turning on its head. And uh, the uh, Wolverhampton team now just uh, down to one rider in the rerun for Heat 14. This is drama, drama in the extreme. And a massive opportunity for the Bellevue Aces to close in once again on the Wolverhampton uh, team. Charles Wright just feeling a bit knocked about, clearly. Just getting collected on the way through there. Well, let's get some reaction now because uh, this will be really interesting. I'll be very interested to see what your thoughts are here, Scott, because there was clearly contact coming out of turn two. Yeah, there was. It's, it's a tough one, Kel, because um, J Ryan Douglas, he spins up off a site. He doesn't get the jump. You've said before he's on that racing line. He does a very, very smart first turn. He, he cuts back up to the inside. There's all that carnage and traffic in front of him. He's out of shot here. But Ryan Douglas, there, look how dark that dirt is on the inside. He's got his front wheel over the line. 
And at that point, he's in front of Charles Wright. Charles Wright has done nothing wrong. It's a 50-50, and I know we can't have all four back in one respect, but when nobody's at fault, it's hard to put somebody out. I can see where Willie Dishington has felt that at this point here, Charles Wright is in front, but Ryan Douglas, that would have been a sweet move if it had paid off, if he had just been able to sneak through there, but the trouble is, is that you watch here again on this replay, he comes through, you've got that big right hand foot rest here. Ryan Douglas knows he'll be contact. And I think if Ryan hadn't have lifted just at that last little bit, he would have possibly missed Charles and not gone down. But Zach Cook as well, they've done exceptionally well to, to miss the boys there. And Charles right in shot there, Kel. Probably a little bit beaten up. But uh, do you feel that was the right call, Kel? I think it probably was. It was a tough one. Um, but uh, there's no question that um, uh, you've got a feel for Ryan Douglas because he pulled off a great move. But he just needed about another couple of inches and he would have, would have been able to squeeze through. But... Uh, uh, there wasn't, and uh, as you rightly pointed out, that right-hand footrest just collecting the front of um, Charles Wright, and uh, down he went. Tough on Ryan Douglas, but uh, in the context of the evening, this is real drama now because uh, with uh, both of the aces back in the rerun and uh, just young Z Zach Cook to represent the uh, Wolverhampton team, this is a huge opportunity for the, Wolver the, uh, the Bellevue aces to close in once again a 5-1 okay, here and all of a sudden it's uh, level going into right heat 15 so um uh, let's get a little bit more reaction scotty what have you got yeah i've got my color and pencil out kelv just quickly before the guys we heard phil say they're going to be pushing off any sec but this is the re the replay just again but if you just watch here just going to pause it right there i mean this is a point where body uh you look at dougie's body language the left leg is out that tells me he's a little bit off balance his weight is shifting to the right hand side he knows there's going to be contact with charles right there he's doing his best to avoid it but he can't just collect him there and at that point there charles right goes down poor old boy's gonna have some gravel rash on him there but like you said, that was a huge heat as well, Kelv. I mean, this could be the turning point in the meeting. There's only that four-point deficit. Dougie is a good rider. You would have been putting him down to at least get a second place in that race. But it's going to be tough. And uh, you can see Charles Wright coming out now. This is going to be a crucial heat, Kelv. It is indeed. And um, uh, unfortunate for Ryan Douglas. But um, uh, it uh, certainly is um, uh, making it for the neutral. Uh, quite an exciting conclusion to the meeting, that's for sure. Paco Castanio has done pretty well tonight as a guest. And uh, a great opportunity for him to make himself a bit of a hero here. And Charles Wright, who's a tough customer, often uh, we see him actually involved in some pretty hairy crashes. But uh, always seems to have the ability to bounce back. And uh, he'll be uh, hoping that he can uh, produce a decent start once again. He's got that inside gate. But um, uh, as I say, it's a real tense moment now with uh, the uh, points 41 to 37. Second time of asking them for heat 14. They're with Charles Wright. Dusted himself down. He goes off the inside in white. Zach Cook alongside him in the blue helmet colour. Paco Castagna coming in here in uh, yellow in gate number three. And Ryan Douglas has been excluded, so no rider on the outside. Numerically, of course, an advantage for the Aces. Every chance here. Can Zach Cook make himself a real hero here? A winter signing, a new boy into the team for Wolverhampton. Can he get out of gate number two and hit the front and just keep it to four points and actually win the meeting for the Wolverhampton team? What a moment it would be for him, but it's not going to be easy. Here we go then, heat number 14, tapes are up. Charles Ryder's got away nicely on the inside. Castagna now switching back to the inside with Cook in the middle of the track. Castagna coming through. Oh, the Bellevue Aces on a 5-1 here. They could level it up here in heat number 14. Kentak could respond. He's really going to give it everything here. Charles Ryder's dusted himself down, fired himself to the front. Cook coming through, he's trying everything he knows. You can throw a blanket over all three riders now. Castagna having a sneaky look over his right shoulder. Not going to be easy. Castagna riding that inside line, covering it with Cook. Cook now on the inside. Brilliant move from Zach Cook. Superb move from him. That's just a little bit of damage limit to Castagna coming back in into the last lap. 
Right side in front, look at Castagna. Sides on the inside, but Cook repeats a compliment. What a heat 14 we've got here. Through the last corner, it's going to be a 4-2 four, four to the Bellevue Ace. It's just two points in it. Going down to heat 15. What a night of, spirit, a night of speedway we we're experiencing here. Charles Wright, fabulous ride from him. Made no mistake at all. Great effort from Zach Cook. Got to applaud that. Sensational ride from him just to keep it to a 4-2. Um, uh, a tough one for him. This meeting has come alive in the second half of the meeting, that's for sure. Heat 14, Charles Wright out in front, three points. Zach Cook, that's a good ride from Cook. Two points for him and Paco Castagna really making him work very hard, picks up the solitary point. Four points for the Aces, two points for the home team, just two points in it for her, before Heat 15, Scotty. What a night. <laughs> oh, what a night. Zach Cook rode, out of, rode his socks off there to get those two points. I mean, a fantastic race. He really had to use his uh, home track knowledge there. I think he's had a bit of a tough time, but I think that race will have done his confidence well to good. Paco rode brilliant here, but Zach Cook, Smart, smart race here. Gets up the inside. Look at that. He's right over his back wheels, just off that white line. Paco tries to get the big elbows out, but not to be denied as Zach goes through there. Two points. Sets us up perfectly for that last heat decider. And there we go. Zach Cook again there. I thought he'd made a boo-boo there by allowing the hole up the inside, but uh, he's a smarter man than me. Perfect move there for Zach Cook. And uh, let's go down and we're going to see what Abby's got to say. Well, what I've got to say, Scotty, is what a night of Speedway we have witnessed. A brilliant advert for the sport. We have one heat remaining, and it's just two points separating these two sides. They had a super heat in the first leg um, today in this traditional bank holiday doubleheader. Will it go down to another super heat? Stay with us.
Welcome back to Mama Green. We have one heat remaining here. It'll be the 30th heat that these teams have raced each other today on Bank Holiday Monday. Just two points separating them. It couldn't be more tense. Scotty Nichols, how's your heart rate at the moment? Well, I'm glad I'm not in heat 15. That's all I can say because my heart rate's beating right now. I don't know what these boys' heart rate's like. Pete, Sam Masters opted for heat 15 when he got the coin toss. Hoping you wouldn't need it, but it looks like you are right now. Yeah, we always do that if we anticipate the meeting being close because obviously it's a slight advantage having choice, you know, in the last heat. So uh, we'll see if that strategy works or not. Well, this over does. You had a fantastic afternoon at Bellevue. Who are you going with and what gates for Heat 15? We're going to have one and three, and I'm going to use Sam uh, Masters on one, hoping he can repeat uh, his Heat 13 heroics, and uh, Steve Worrell on three. Yeah, Steve, he's had a fantastic night, I have to say. Yeah, it's a toss up between him and Becker, really, but Luke's having a lot of trouble with his leg, you know, he can barely stand up. Um, and it's been a long time since Worrell was uh, was on the track. But, you know, he's an experienced guy who can trap, so um, let's hope he does. Well, thanks, Pete. I'm going to come to you, Mark. Obviously, two and four, who are you going with? Uh, we're going Dan Bewley in white off uh, gate. No, sorry. No, I'm pretty good. Let me get in white off gate two and uh, Dan Bewley off yellow in gate four. I have to say, you probably didn't expect Wolverhampton to necessarily push you that close at home, but whatever you've said to the boys, they've delivered because you got your ends kicked here earlier in the year. Yeah, I think the Premiership um, is obviously a very you know level sort of competition, you know, very fierce. Um, the teams that line up across the board, you know, the whole whole seven of them. But uh, you know, we you know these boys learn quick, um, as did Wolverhampton when they came back to our place. So uh, just a real credit to the sport, really, how they've you know, put a great display on. But um, there's all to play for right now. So we, we forget about the displays and what, what it's doing. We just want to win. Well, mate, it's coming down to Heat 15, so I'll let you boys go and G your boys on. Best of luck. Back to you, Kelf. Thanks, Scotty. And uh, a last heat decider for us. It might not be the last race of the night. We might just get a super heat. So the circumstances are here, are the scenarios, then a three all for Wolves. We'll see them win the night and the aggregate point. So they just need a three points out of this. A 4-2 and we'll go to a super heat to decide the outcome of both the uh, evening and the aggregate points as well. That really would be quite sensational. And of course, a 5-1, we'll see... Um, Bellevue win the night, so uh, really is a tense way to finish the night. All uh, scenarios still open here. So um, uh, everything to race for and the big hitters out on track. Dan Bewley started the evening slowly, but has uh, improved his performances in his last two rides big time with five points from his last two outings. But Sam Masters did ride brilliantly in Heat 13. Um, uh, those guys there just uh, chatting and talking. They can relax now, their work is done. But for these four, four massive laps ahead here and Premiership Speedway, we are royally entertained so far this evening. Heat number 15 then, Sam Masters on the inside in the red helmet colour. Brady Kurtz alongside him in white and gate number two. Gate number three in blue is Steve Worrell. Good night for Worrell. And off the outside in Dan Bewley in yellow. Not easy off the outside, but he can produce heroics. And he's certainly been uh, riding high and wide and looking good. Charles Wright, who rode superbly well in the restaging of heat 14, coming through well there. But now all focus now on heat 15. Which way is it going to go? Masters, who rode so well. He rode with eyes in the back of his head in Heat 13 to deny Dan Bewley, who was coming on strong throughout. Really did have to be very tough. And I'm sure it's going to be tough racing once again in Heat 15 to see which way this goes. A three-all to the home team. They've done it. They'll win it by two points. A 4-2 will go to a super heat, and a 5-1 Bellevue will win. So, wow, what a night. And as I say, everything up for grabs. Bewley, once again, every time he's come to the start, he's been off the bike. All riders off bikes there for a moment, just desperately trying to find a good spot to start from. This start in Heat 15 is going to be absolutely crucial. Gate 4, not an ideal place to be. Um, uh, clearly, they've gone with Kurtz, who's been in great form tonight. Rock solid throughout the evening, Kurtz. He's there on that uh, gate number two. So here we go, what a way to finish the evening. 
one and two in the league at the moment. The champions here had a poor visit earlier in the uh, early in the season. And this time around, very different. We're away. They charge into the first corner. Masters is there. Kurtz has gone very wide. Very wide indeed. Worrell's up the inside. Kurtz coming on now. It's a 4 2 at this early stage to the home team, and that'll do it. Really round the outside. Can he produce anything for Masters? Producing off that inside gate. The choice to go for Heat 15 for the gate positions. Looks like it could pay massive dividends now. Masters out in front. Brady Curtis in second place, Julie back in third, and Stevie Warren has been pushed to the back. Masters now blows this place inside out, riding brilliantly out in front. Just needs to keep it going. He's got a little bit of a breathing space between him and Kurtz. He's into the last lap, and this is going to see them through to a massive victory. They've come under huge pressure late on in the evening. But Sam Masters in heat 13 and 15 is the hero for the home team. What a ride from him. And he seals the deal, and they pick up all the points on the night. <laughs> Pete Adams a touch relieved. Delighted with that. What a night of Speedway has been. Ten points up early on the home team. Bellevue, all credit to them. They've played a massive part tonight. Closing into two points with just one race to go. 46 points to 44. An excellent night of Speedway. Home crowd delighted, of course they are. And the two meetings today on Bank Holiday Monday have been absolutely a fantastic advert for Premiership Speedway in this country. Superb stuff and congratulations to all the riders. But Sam Masters is the hero, winning Heat 13 and, more importantly, winning the massive Heat 15. The result, then, Sam Masters out in front, three points for him. Brady Kurtz back in second place, two points. And Dan Bewley in third, one point. Steve Worrell missing out for the first time this evening. What a night of Speedway. Let's get down to Scotty. Yeah, thanks, Carl. But certainly was a night of Speedway. What an advert and what a heat 15. The pressure on that man on the inside would have been immense. He knew that three points was enough to, to bag his side the win and the aggregate bonus point, that all-important aggregate bonus point. And Sam Masters showed all his class and his knowledge of the Wolverhampton track there. He was under a lot of pressure to hear from the inside. The inside gate here was advantageous to a degree tonight, but it's downhill. You can feel a bit vulnerable, and if you don't make that jump, you can easily get trapped down, but Sam Masters was not going to let that happen. From there, he rode a sensible race and doing too radical, just inch by inch pulled away. The battle was on behind, but that was irrelevant, really. Sam Masters there has a look over his shoulder. He knows, little wheelie, he knows he's delivered the goods for his team, got the three points, and he had a little bit of a blip midway through the meeting, but showed a lot of resolve, a lot of character to get the three points there. Abby, who you got for us? <laughs> Well, I've got just take a beat for a moment. It's been an incredible night, a dwelling of your night of Speedway. I want to remind you of all the sport that is coming your way across the channel. It includes Formula E, it's round 10. It's a double header from Jakarta, US Sport 2 Live on Saturday, 8.30. World Superbikes, round five from Mazzano, Discovery Plus Live also on Saturday. Motocross World Championship from Latvia, Discovery Plus Live, that's Saturday as well, 11 o'clock. So loads of motorsport coming your way. But it's been a brilliant night of Speedway. What's happened at Peterborough? Let's hear from Dave Rowe. Well, a grand style finish here as well because Leicester were eight points in front, but the Panthers came charging back in heat 14. Richie Worrell and Hans Anderson up against Jake Allen around the final turn, looking to cut the gap back down to four points, and they did just that with a 5-1, so a last hit decider here as well. 40 points to 44. They're away for heat 15. Michael Palmtoff and Niels Christian Everson up against Max Frick and Richard Lawson, and Everson gets round the outside in blue to take the advantage over Max Frick with Palmtoff in third place. A 40 situation here for the Panthers, Leicester still in front, but Palmtoff switching back now on Max Frick, and Palmtoff gets down the inside of Frick, and he's taken Frick into second place, and if it stays this way, we're going to have a super heat here, with Everson and Palmtoff having the advantage, and Max Frick now trying to come back into contention around the outside, Frick getting back around Palmtoff, and now he topped back for the inside, sensational ride by Max Frick, he's gone from third to first, he's taken Palmtoff and Everson, and that could be enough for an away win for the Leicester Lions here at the Eastern England 
Arena. Peterborough briefly on a 5-1 with Emerson and Palm Top, but a brilliant ride by Max Frick has won three races already. This could be number four, and it could be the most important because Leicester are on the verge of an away victory. Max Frick, round turn three and four for the final time, and Frick wins heat 15 from Niels Christian Emerson. Michael Palm Top in third place. Leicester win by 47 points to 43. Delight for Max Frick. Let's get some reaction to that Leicester victory. Stuart Dixon joining me now, and Stuart, the unfortunate loss of Dan Thompson, but bottom line, first away success after so many near misses for the Lions. Yeah, you're right, Dan Thompson took a sore one after the race, we send him his best wishes, I think he's got a little bit of concussion, so he's a bit banged up, but the rest of the boys uh, pulled together and got us over the line and we got the, got the three points, yeah. And leading from the top by Max Frick, what a he 15 for him, and great to see Richard Lawson not only back in action, but scoring. Yeah, he scored well, Richard, he got his paid 10 tonight, Max Frick, was, as you say, will get the plaudits for winning Heat 15. We knew Gate 3 wasn't, good, wasn't great, and Peter would go 2-4, and four, but that would leave the door open for Max Frick, and the plan was put our strongest rider off the inside gate, you know, and get the win, but for the first lap or so, <laughs> it looked rather interesting, but uh, we got there in the end, big support here tonight, very pleased to see the backing we got, and uh, the, the fans uh, were rewarded with the Lions doing the business, yeah. Brilliant performance by Max Frick. 13 points for five rides, a fantastic ride in Heat 15. Leicester take match and aggregate points. The final score from the thrilling contest, Peterborough 43, Leicester 47. What a night of speedway, nearly down to a super heat at the East of England Arena and nearly down to a super heat here as well. But Wolves were victorious, which means they go to the... To, oh, almost to the top of the table. Um, it's Bellevue Aces on 14, Wolves on 10. Leicester Lions in third now with 10 points as well. Witches in fourth, Tigers in fifth, Kingsland Stars with that huge announcement that Artem Laguta will join them and you'll see them on him on action on Thursday. And Peterborough Panthers at the bottom of the table. With fireworks here at Monmo Green. And a reminder, so much sport, so much motorsport for all you fans of two-wheel action. You won't want to miss this. We're going to have a week off of British Speedway. We'll be back on the 12th of June, your Sport 2 Live, with Ipswich versus Sheffield. But we will be on action with the Speedway Grand Prix this weekend in Prague. It's the third round. Your Sport 2 Live at 5.30. The World Superbikes, it's round five, and that's on Discovery Plus Live. And MotoGP, it's the GP of Italy from Mugello, Speedy Sport Live, 9th and 11th of June. And these are nice scenes, um, Sam Masters and Luke Becker. They are heroes, and absolutely, for someone like Becker, he's just come back, it's his first time riding on his home track with that broken leg. He's still limping, Scott, an incredible performance from those guys. Oh, sensational, Luke Becker. I mean, I spoke to some of the boys, they said he was in an awful lot of pain after his first race at Bellevue today, but uh, yeah, fantastic night. Fantastic night. Speedway, you absolute beauty. We'll see you in a couple of weeks' time.